two minutes um, for some other folks to join that told me they were going to be here. Um, just a question, is anyone here from uh, Detective uh, Barbara Taylor Burnett's family or is the detective uh, in the room? Is that a no? <laughs> okay, it's the first item on the agenda. Um, all right, we'll give it another another two minutes. Um, just like to welcome uh, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Thank you for for joining our meeting tonight, Congresswoman. Thank you for having me. Uh, very briefly, uh, we we uh, passed the the uh, American Rescue Plan, which is one point uh, one point six trillion dollars to the city of New York uh, and the state uh, all around our, our country, and a, a massive amount came to the city over a hundred billion dollars. But in the package, there was uh, twenty billion dollars for vaccines and enough to produce enough doses to take care of everybody in the country. Uh, we've been working very hard to get a uh, vaccine site in North Brooklyn. We finally got one last week for Cooper Houses, and I have met with the mayor, I've submitted letters, met with his people. They are gonna be setting up a permanent vaccine site on May 7th at uh, St. Nick's which I think is great for the neighborhood. And it'll be there, not just for a couple of days, but permanently, that'll be a site right there in the community to serve North Brooklyn. Uh, the, this past, uh, we, we've been, we, we had a hearing, uh, you know, the, the special message from the president. And I was one of the roughly 20 members of Congress that were invited because of COVID, only a few of us could go to, to hear him in that session. On his first 100 days, uh, he had promised 100 vaccines. He did 220 million vaccines ahead of schedule. Uh, our economy is booming ahead at 6.4 percent GDP, which is very, very good news. And uh, out of the American Rescue Plan, as a former teacher, I particularly track education, and there is enough money going for for free pre-K for every three-year-old and four-year-old in New York City. It's gonna be great for the kids and great for the parents that have been at home uh, teaching children. So those were three big wins for us. The next item is a jobs plan, uh, and that is infrastructure and an American family plan. And the American family plan would be two years free of uh, community college education so that more people could get a college education. And uh, many others, uh, 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 these haven't passed yet. The American Family Plan and the Infrastructure Plan hasn't passed yet. Um, and uh, I met with the administration on improving helicopter safety uh, and uh, trying to pass a bill that will stop any non-essential helicopter flight over New York City. So those, those are some of the things that I've been working on and I'd be glad to take any questions. We submitted a grant also for the YMCA for roughly a million dollars and a one for the food pantry, the, the, the Angels, the Angels food pantry that's been going around uh, all of North Brooklyn feeding people that are needy. Thank you, Congresswoman, for that update. Um, and again, uh, anybody on the committee uh, with a question for the Congresswoman? William, go ahead. Uh, just on behalf of your community, thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you again, uh, Congresswoman. Uh, welcome back to the Transportation Committee meeting. 
um, for another fun evening. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, I believe we have <clears throat> uh, everyone we need in the room for the presentations. I'll, uh, I'll make another appeal to um, uh, Detective Barbara Taylor Burnett and her family, if she is on the, on, in the room. Okay, not not hearing um, anyone representing item number one. Uh, we will leave it open um, during the meeting, and we'll we'll come back uh, we'll come back to it if they are able to join us later. Otherwise, we'll have to hold it over to the June meeting. Um, all right, so that means we will move on to item number two, um, which is uh, DOT presentation Meeker Avenue Safety Project. Uh, New York City DOT proposing corridor safety improvements on Meeker Avenue from Metropolitan Avenue to, uh, to Apollo Street. Um, this plan reconfigures the area under the BQE to allow for space specifically designed for bicycles, pedestrians, and paid parking. The uh, design reduces conflicts by clarifying movements, and it makes new, safer bicycle and pedestrian connections, including a much anticipated connection with the new Cambridge bike pad path. Um, and that's going to be Craig Barrowald, our returning champion um, for uh, the presentation. Um, hey, Eric. I know there was. Yes. So that's me. I'm Craig here. Oh, hey, Craig. Um, was uh, I know there was somebody that wanted to make a statement maybe before, but if not, we'll just we'll just go into it. Um, no. OK. Um, all right. <clears throat> So, uh, Craig, you have the floor. I believe you're presenting on this item. Um, yes. And we look forward to hearing it. Okay. You're, you should be able to share your screen automatically. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you see my mouse as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. And okay. Uh, just for, um, oh, well, I guess it doesn't. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No worries. Um, Hey everyone, my name is Craig Barrowald. Um, as Eric mentioned, I work at DOT in the bike unit. Um, I want to thank you guys for letting me come here and present. And I also do want to thank my colleagues who are on the call as well. And you talk about uh, Meeker Avenue. And my computer's frozen. Everyone, please okay. mute while the presentation is going on. Thank you. Um, here's a really brief overview. Obviously, we're going to spend most of the time covering the proposal, but we do want to spend a little bit of time talking about how we got here and also where we want to go in the future, too. So just to go over a little bit of the background, this shows some work we've done in the area, which includes a number of um, pet extensions, paint and concrete, as well as some accompanying bike lanes. Um, the main thing we do want to highlight here is the <coughs> connection to the Kajushko Bridge, which we installed when the bridge opened itself. And really, this project is kind of building off that, connecting from this location um, where it touches down all the way to Metropolitan Avenue. If you can all remember way back when, there was a public workshop back in 2017. There was an accompanying um, portal survey as well. This is just some of the feedback that we received via that, and none of this should be all that surprising. People are interested in improved safety. They're interested in connections. They really want to see better use of the space underneath the BQE. This community and this board is no stranger to bike infrastructure. A lot of these projects I actually worked on as part of this too. Um, the K bridge is up here. You can see that there is kind of a glaring gap between the K bridge and the Williamsburg bridge. And this project is about connecting those as well. We did get bike counts last year on the K bridge. We're seeing about 300 cyclists, which isn't a ton, but I want everybody to realize these are 300 new cyclists, as you can never bike over the bridge before. Williamsburg bridge saw a significant increase in volume um, in, this past, sound in this past year. Wait, wait, wait. People, um, do you guys mind muting? Appreciate that. Thank you. 
um, while more people were biking, a 30% increase translates to over 300,000 extra trips. Um, also, there are, of course, Jerry, hold on, Craig, Craig, Jerry, can you, can you mute Simon, please? And anyone, and anyone else that's not muted, can you just go through and take a look for me, please? Thank you. Who is talking? Is I just wait, but I'm signed in. Oh, Lauren, do you mind muting? Okay, I'm going to keep on. Keep going. Um, Go ahead, Craig. Thanks. This, thanks, Eric. This slide highlights our Green Wave plan. I'm not going to read all this. This is online for those of the you that are interested. This was. Um, a report put out after a high number of cyclist fatalities a couple of years ago. I, I do want to note that a large number of those did um, occur in Brooklyn. Um, and not surprising, Meeker Avenue is within a Vision Zero priority area. This has been a focus area for us quite some time. Um, and hopefully, as you can see, this project is looking to improve upon this safety record here. There are are over 200 total injuries in the the from 2014 to 2018. Just want to note that. Okay, so let's get into the proposal here. For any of you that um, either look to cross Meeker or look to walk down it, uh, these pictures highlight more or less what you'll you're gonna find. The one the one thing that I really really want to stress here is all of these parking fields are isolated in nature. You, you can't walk between them without venturing into the roadway. You either need to cross Meeker. I mean, that's the only way. That's that's the crux of this project is connecting these fields, connecting the neighborhood, and connecting to the K Bridge. Um, this represents a huge gap in the network with no dedicated space for cyclists and, and pedestrians. You have a lot of really complicated intersections, which we're going to talk about, with a lot of heavy turn volumes, too. Um, a lot of the parking fields you'll notice too are vacant a lot of the time, underutilized, and you'll also see bend vehicles and uh, legal dumping too. So this slide kind of really emulates what we're looking at for the corridor. This cross section that you see doesn't apply to every single block. I'll go over them and talk about where it does. But it does represent the general idea here is to add a new two way bike and ped pedestrian path by repurposing about half of the parking. As part of that bike and ped path about establishing those new connections, we're adding left turn signals. This will reduce the conflict and allow for safer new crossings down the center of um, the parking fields here. By doing all this, we'll increase safety for all users. And by having the other half of the parking, a regulated parking field, We'll promote turnover, we'll reduce abandonment, and we'll have like scheduled cleanings to make sure this area, um, including the new bike and pet path, is maintained. We're going to break it up into four different sections. As I said, they're not all the same. In fact, there are two the two first sections. They come out into the roadway. There is no parking field the closer you get to the bridge. Every one of these sections includes a new bike path. Um, three and four include pedestrian path as well. So here's the first section. I know there's a lot going on in this slide. Um, this is connecting from Apollo Street to Morgan Avenue. The idea here is to repurpose one of the travel lanes along the bridge here, if you can see my mouse, and add a two-way protected bike lane. The, or the two-way path you can see here in the cross section. This will keep them along the, the bridge wall and so they can transition into the parking field. The important thing I want to note here is that the BQ off ramp is one through lane. If there's two turn lanes, but one through lane is feeding into Meeker Avenue. We do have to make some signal timing adjustments. I can talk about those more um, at the end. But this <coughs> will, there will be a slight delay increase at the intersection. Um, but I want to note, this is really important that the Q length will not exceed the storage on the off ramp. 
That means there's enough room for vehicles to store and not um, go into the BQE and to still get through and process on that signal. Um, as part of this too, right now here, you can see this is a bus stop. We would need to relocate this about 500 feet uh, west to Sutton Street, so the bus is not stopping in the travel lane. This is the second piece of it. So now remember, cyclists are along the wall here as they approach Morgan Avenue. The other interesting thing I want to point out at Morgan Avenue, Meeker already goes down to one travel lane, as you can see here. The, these vehicles are parked along the curb, so these vehicles need to transition to one travel lane, and what we don't see is spill back to Apollo and spill back to the off-ramp right now if you go out there. Um, in order to make this work, we would look to build out this like four foot little sidewalk piece here to allow cyclists to ramp up as they look to get into the parking field. At Morgan Avenue, since we have now a single travel lane, we can't have a dedicated left turn lane as well. So we would need to ban that left turn. This is the lowest volume left turn throughout the whole corridor. It's significantly lower than all the other lefts. Um, as you can see here, the highest is 60 in the PM peak. These vehicles can use Vandervoort at the intersection before or Kingsland at the next intersection um, as well. So, because remember, we're going to have a two way path and a single travel lane. We don't want the left turns blocking that lane. So, here's the cross section you can see with the sidewalk path. Cyclists will then transition into this photo that you can see here. The bike along the column here and the angled parking will be pushed out, as you see here, protecting the two way path. This does require some parking loss to, to, for turns and sight lines. Um, it's not significant for this block, though. And this, the metered would be or up, be upgraded from ASP to metered. Um, and the fee structure right now is they're looking at is 157 to 10 p.m. Um, Okay, let's go to the next slide here. So here's a site plan that shows you how the intersection is gonna work. The critical thing that I noted before is these left turn lanes. So you can see there's an existing left turn lane, but there's no dedicated left turn phase. So what happens now is a vehicle turns in and starts filling up the centerpieces. We would hold the left turns on Meeker Avenue and give them a dedicated signal when they're held Cyclists will cross here. Every intersection after this is going to have pedestrians crossing as well. And every intersection after this is going to look very similar to this one. So dedicated left turn lanes, new crossing, and building ramps and extensions where feasible. So we'll add extra space here so pedestrians and cyclists can help negotiate this space. Um, we'll also add um, lane assignments underneath the BQE here. Um, including flashing left yellow is to make it clear that this is a turn um, across a crosswalk as well. So here's the next section. This is the cross section that was first shown. You can see a photo here off to the right. This is the main, what the project's gonna look like. Eight foot um, two way bike path, eight foot ped path on the north side. So again, all the intersections are going to be upgraded with bike and ped crossings, ramps, and curb extensions where possible. Dedicated left turn lanes and dedicated phases throughout as well to cross them. Um, upgrading the ASP to, to metered. And in this section, we did want to do one um, convert one parking circulation approaching McGinnis. We just want to keep vehicles out of McGinnis from the fields, keep them away from that busy intersection. Another component of this is at North Henry and North Graham. We would add right turn lanes with a delayed right turn, a flashing right. Um, this gives pedestrians a head start to make that crossing. So we would have to add a right turn lane at North Henry. This would require um, repurposing those five parking spots as well. Where this cyclist is also, this is Monitor Street. Right now it's an uncontrolled crossing. We are looking at adding a signal there um, as well. Here's McGinnis. This is probably the most complicated intersection throughout the entire corridor. The things that I talked about previously are all similar. Left turn lanes with left turn phases, 
when the left turns are held, that's when bytes and peds will cross. Um, again, if we're, we're adding a phase here, so we are gonna take away some time, but I, I do wanna stress that the queue on the off ramp will not seep back into, into the BQE as well. It was really critical um, to do that. Um, I don't think there's anything else different um, about here. I do want to know, you know, with these curb extensions, we're adding more space for people to negotiate. We'll use markings and signage to make sure cyclists are aware that there's pedestrians crossing here um, as well. This photo highlights too where a curb extension would be. This is the last section of it. The cross section is, as you notice, is a little different. This is where the parking fields get much wider. You have angled parking on both sides. We are able to retain the angled parking by just pushing it out and converting the parking fields from two way to one way. This allows um, the vehicles to keep, to keep coming through, but it minimizes the various movements as well. The, you'll also notice that the, the bike path and ped path is on the south side. We do this because we need to be on the south side at Union Avenue, which I'll talk about in a couple of slides. Um, everything else here is the same at Lorimer Street. It's another um, northbound right turn lane with a flashing uh, flashing phase, and that's that's two spots. This is Manhattan Avenue. This is where the transition is going to happen. Like I said, we need to be on the south side of Union Avenue. We can make this transition work by closing this duplicate um, entrance. I know on the site plan you can't see there's another entrance here. It's in the photo right here. Um, apologies, you can't see in the site plan, but it's there. That will become that new entrance. By building all of this space out, we can add markings. We can make it clear to pedestrians and cyclists that we're switching sides um, at this location. This is Union Avenue. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we need to be on the south side here. The reason for that is because of the off ramp from the BQE. There's a combined through and left turn um, that happens simultaneously. We can't hold the left turns without impacting the through movement. So we let the left turns go. We push them back. We give a lot of space for cyclists and pedestrians to cross, but we hold them here and give, give the cyclists and peds dedicated phase. You'll notice here too that we're we're doing um we're doing shared space here. The reason for that, the reason we, we can't build this out is there's a catch basin right where this gentleman's standing. We can't move a catch basin in house. We also can add parking in this channel basin here. It's almost 60 spots. It helps narrow Meeker Avenue westbound so it helps reduce speeding um, throughout the corridor as well. This is the last intersection. This is Metropolitan Avenue, a very busy intersection. Um, a lot of similar treatments here. Again, a new crossing for bikes and peds. This requires no sig signal time timing change because the left turn is already banned. The other elements that are new is the curb extensions on um, Metropolitan, including the painted one here to help shorten these crossings that you see here. You can see a left turn vehicle. A lot of turns happening here with people trying to cross. Um, the other thing to point out, there'll be a lot of like southbound cyclists looking to transition into Meeker Avenue. We can build out the space here to give them room to queue. We would obviously need to remove these um, signs and rebuild the sidewalk um, as well. So this is really the first step in the process is to start doing these community board presentations, keep doing on, on ongoing stakeholder engagement. And you know, if when we if we were looking to start implementation, it'd be the summer and work into fall. We'd start at the Kajushko Bridge and make our way west. I do want to note that this is a significant amount of work, significant amount of concrete markings work. Um, it most likely take two seasons to to install. Um, this much scope. And the, the real thing here, I just want to keep highlighting, I know I keep saying it is this new bike and pet path. It does require a little less than half the parking to be repurposed to make this work. But at the same time, it would connect these isolated lots 
connect the corridor throughout the community and to the Kajusco Bridge, while also improving safety for all users. We're looking at adding bike parking where feasible. We're already upgrading the street lighting underneath, all as a matter to revitalize and help maintain the space. And I do want to note that this does not preclude any like future work within this area too. This does, this is like a step in the right direction. This is a step to look at adding more public amenities, explore funding for capital options, as you see here at the Brooklyn Bridge, and also rethink some of this parking too, like with car share or um, electric vehicle parking as well. All right, that's everything. There's probably no questions, right? Just kidding. None at all. Um, so that is a lot of information. It's a lot of information. I I know. And I know there's going to be questions. So, um, but thank you for this presentation. I would I, just my my first impression um, is positive. Um, uh, it's, I'm really happy to see the link finally with the K bridge that we've been crying about for since the bridge reopened. Um, uh, I think those fixes are good. Um, I, I noticed a uh, um, couple questions about, um, uh, well, we'll just get into the, the paid parking versus ASP, um, alternate sides parking. Um, can you, because uh, I know that's going to be a, a, a sticking point for a lot of other um, committee members <clears throat> in the public. Can you just go over those um, just a little bit more? Where where the uh, ASP is being taken out in favor of metered and what the logic was for that? It would be throughout the whole corridor, throughout all of the parking fields. So okay, I I thought I noticed you had se se uh, a few different sections where that was happening and others that it wasn't, but maybe I there are. It's, I think what sense. you're thinking of um, the first two sections it doesn't happen because that's we're not in the parking field at those locations. We we. Mm -hmm. We obviously need to get the bikes out of the parking fields because the bridge touches down. But where where we have a parking field, it would be um, it would be con converted to meter. Um, and I'm sorry, what percentage? It's a little less than um, a half. It's like forty nine percent. It's the the total number of spots is like. Um, Approaching 680, so it's a little less than half would be repurposed. Okay, and when when you repurpose, well, what was the logic for actually, actually putting in the, the paid parking? Like, what is the the discussion that's happening to say to do that? First of all, and second, um, did um, when we asked uh, DOT to go back and and review the um, the need for paid parking, where you're putting it in? Well, I guess it's throughout, right? But are there was there any effort to prioritize areas that are closer to businesses, like in front of DQE Liquor or the, the Sunset mm -hmm. Diner, for example, in that area, or uh, by the church, um, or Henry, or um, you know, I can I can go on, but um, uh, the Exley, you know, for example, like places where it actually um, is the most useful to the businesses that the few businesses that are actually on uh, retail businesses on Meeker. Yeah, that's actually um, people on the parking team. Maybe they can answer more location sure. specific questions. Mike, do you want to or Jemmy be able to jump in? Sure. One of the reasons for the um, the meeting parking is that it gives us an opportunity to visit daily, and what we will ensure is daily we will be going to this location. And ensuring that, you know, as we maintain the parking field, we will be maintaining the bike lane. We will be maintaining the pedestrian walkway. If there's debris, we will clean it up. If there's snow, we will plow it. So it provides a mechanism for us to be there, to control the parking in there, um, but also to help maintain this 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 very important uh, system of not only parking but bicycles and pedestrian uh, activity. And that was the reason that that's going Can you in. Can clarify like that. what maintain means? Maintain. Can I ask a question? Mike, can you can you explain um, what? Is there any room for questions? Or are you guys Lauren, just talking? Don't let anyone else talk. Sorry, I'm sorry, you're not recognized. 
it's it's where I will recognize the public in a minute. Please don't interrupt. Okay, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> when we, what we do now, sure. No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. What we do now is we maintain all parking fields. We go there, we remove debris. Um, if people dump things over there, if whatever happens that would prohibit the activity, we would clean it. Um, as far as the bike lane, we would plow it. If it snows, we'll make sure it's clean. If somebody dumps, because there is, we find a lot of industrial waste dumped in this area. I mean, it's meant tons, sure. literally tons that we removed and we would continue to remove. Because if our forces are there to maintain the parking, our forces are there also to maintain the pedestrian and the bike lane. We do other bike lanes in the proximity of parking. So, you know, that is the rationale for us. Um, why does it require paid parking to monitor um, a bike lane corridor? If, if we're going to be there to maintain the parking, we're going to be there to maintain the bike lane. If we're not going to be under there for paid parking, then it's going to be ASP and it'll be exactly what you have now. Eric, typically, and I, I know um, we don't, DOT doesn't maintain the roadway. That's the purview of DS and Y. And if if we have more infrastructure, like this, this becomes a problem. We see this become a problem on, on our streets, especially with a lot, the amount of snow we got this last year. Um, but this is kind of a, a mechanism to make sure these, the, the path and the bike paths are clear of debris and um functional i just want to be clear the the idea of paid parking because when you came to us in october with with paid parking the bike lane was not you know part of this yeah. scenario so there's something for you know previous in in the idea sessions that were banging around dot to say paid parking and now you're saying mm -hmm. that because the paid parking will be there we'll be able to better maintain the um uh the bike lanes and, and etc but i i think i'm going to speak for a lot of people when it when we're we're saying well you know we're still getting paid parking that we that nobody seems to feel is necessary except for dot and it should be dot's responsibility to monitor the bike and pedestrian lanes anyway so when we first presented this we presented it with the parking only, but there were some slides in that indicated that we were working with bikes, that we would be changing and modifying everything because the bike lane has always been a part of the proposal. If it seemed in the first presentation that that wasn't the case, then that's on us. But bikes has always been a part of this thing. We've been working with them for several years on this thing, but this is a very complex area. As far as the, 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 the staff making sure it's clean and so forth, I have finite resources to keep the parking fields and the, the things that we are dealing with now clean, you know, so I have to use these resources and staff where the needed parking is. That's the way our policy works. And, it, and there too, it's not, it, this isn't like just cause of the bike and pedaling. Uh, some of the issues we're seeing here are abandoned vehicles, you know, thing, things like that. And that's, this is, you know, a tool to like help Mitigate, mitigate those too. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So um, we'll open it up to the committee for questions. Uh, Will, um, if I can ask you to um, keep an eye on the chat um, tonight yeah. again uh, for any raised hands or anything like that. Um, just because with the presentation up, I can't see all hands raised. So need a little committee help on yes. this. I'll... And if uh, you're you're the best, Will. Um, and I just want to see if um, I, no I noticed some phone numbers that are not identified by name. So if uh, Abe Lebkovitz, uh, Lebkovitz or um, Joe Goldstein are, are in the room, can you please announce yourself? I'm looking for perfect attendance and we're too short. So, okay, I don't hear anybody. So, all right, thanks. Uh, Will, thanks. And uh, any, Will, do you want to go first? Um, I I'm sure you have something to say. Um, sure. I mean, I, there, you know, there's a lot of people, there's 91 people on the call. Um, you know, I just, I just want to, I, I feel like thanking DOT for, you know, we've been asking for these sorts of improvements for pedestrians and bicyclists for a very long time. And especially with the Cambridge opening. And, um, I really appreciate taking 
you know, doing a lot of this work, like the curbs, adding all this stuff, all the intersections, you know, it's an incredibly complicated problem. So I just want to sort of acknowledge that. And I don't have a lot of specifics. I mean, I think it's like a lot to digest here. And I think having maybe some walkthroughs with uh, community board members and other folks that live and work in the area would be useful to understand maybe some of the specifics at especially some of these intersections. Um, so I don't really have any specific um, questions right now, but I'll, I can monitor. I do. Okay. Well, one second. I'm not sure who that is. Um, we're going to, we're going to go to, if you don't mind, we'll go to committee members first who have their hands raised. And I'm just going to go down my list. So there's no prejudice. How here. is that fair at all for the democratic process? Okay. It's okay. not, but okay. Can I, can I explain real quickly on behalf of the community board? In every community board committee meeting, we always take questions first from the committee members. Then we open it up to the public, and that's what we're doing tonight. So if you raise your hand, you will be called on and you'll have an opportunity to speak. Okay, so the first community board member I see on the committee with their hand raised is Ryan. Hey, thanks. Um, I really love the bike and pedestrian safety improvements this weekend. I helped put up a bicycle for Christopher Meyer, who had died on Meeker and Frost Street, and his family held their annual memorial. So I'm, I've, like I said, we've been asking for safety improvements along that corridor for years. So thank you. I had a question about the parking because I know that's the major contention. Was there a study of who parks there? Because I have a car. I live on Metropolitan. I've never parked there because I don't want people to trash my truck. I know it as the spot to park if you're going away on vacation, if you want to leave your bike for a while and have it not have to deal with stuff. And so I'm just curious, and I've seen a lot of abandoned cars, and I'm just curious, one, if you did a study of, of that, and two, is it paid parking 24 hours or just during the daytime? I wasn't clear on that. Thanks. The, the paid parking would be during the day, 7 to 10, not, not 24 hours. Um, and there's no... No specific study, but we did a lot of observational like walkthroughs. Well, mostly we've been on site like quite a number of times over the past years. Will. Okay, uh, next, uh, Karen. Karen Nieves. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to say that. This is so long overdue, um, and I'm actually excited for the changes. Um, I do have some questions, like regarding, you know, the turning radiuses for the, you know, for the trucks, and just making sure that they're they're not going to be, you know, hanging in the intersection. Um, if you guys could just, you know, talk about the, you know, the, I know, I understand that's what the turning lanes are for and the turning timing. Um, I'm, I'm just concerned about them, you know, um, blocking the intersection as they do currently. So, um, that's one, two, um, as far as the metered park, like, again, all the pedestrian, um, work that you guys are doing we have asked for years and years and years so i am so excited um to see the intersection safer um again i'm just concerned about turning radiuses and um blocking as far as the um intersections um for you know the oversized trucks and um as far as the meter parking i know in the last presentation you know it wasn't it, there was an opportunity for to have some metered parking and maybe areas other areas not non metered parking and now in this presentation it's the whole entire strip um and and you're saying that this metered parking is necessary in order for you guys to maintain um you know the bike pathway and the pedestrian pathway um, however, isn't that DSNY's responsibility as well? Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to think of a way where we could, you know, maybe either meet halfway or 
why is it necessary for the I'm, I'm still not understanding the, why it's necessary for meter parking. Hi, Karen, it's good to hear from you. Um, so the, the first thing about the turning radii, radii, we did all the turn analysis that was required and then used the trucks where we had truck routes specifically. The one thing that I, I do want to note with the new signal timing is that the, the center area the, that passes through each one will clear out through each signal progression. There are there are a couple that I showed that, that we do have to maintain um, the turns for people to get in at Union and Manhattan because we don't have space for turn lanes or the capacity to add them. But for the most part, almost every intersection, the the median should flush out with trucks and everybody else. And all the turn lanes um, or the turn turning radii, we double checked and, and cross checked too. Um, and and I, I do want to keep noting too, like the the meter isn't just about maintenance of the bike lane too. That like some of the issues we're seeing is abandoned vehicles, um, vehicles just staying there, including some of the photos I showed. So it's, it's all like kind of an impetus to to uh, to fix these two, as well as helping maintain the paths too. It is challenging during these days of cuts to get. Um, Yes, and why to, to help us. They have been a great partner. I don't, I don't want to say that, but we have to be cognizant of that as well. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm just is, wondering there a way, is there a way? Sorry, that there's sorry feedback. about this feedback. Um, is there a way that we could kind of look at maybe certain areas where we don't need the metered parking or that we could, you know, because again, I guess the community is also visioning some, you know, additional open space in the future. So yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm wondering if there's maybe certain areas that um, we could do um, non meter parking. I'm just concerned once it's in, it's going to be in yeah. and then and then we're not going to be able to change um, what's the use for underneath the BQE. Yeah, I mean, no. We will take your comment. Well, this is part of the 1st step, you know, coming back with this. Um, plan that's, um. More holistic, so we'll, we'll take these comments back and we'll regroup with the parking team and. Um, I think take it from there. If I could say 1 thing, it's Ted Wright from New York city DOT. That we oftentimes do remove metered parking. <laughs> it's, it's not something we really enjoy. Um. But things do change, you know, metered parking, especially with the way we're now doing meters. It does allow us a little bit more freedom. This doesn't mean that we'll have metered parking there in perpetuity. This is a 1st step. Um, I think it's a great 1st step because it allows us to actually get this space and get it cleaned. Um, but I, I, I understand what you're saying, Karen, but I also think I also know that we do change stuff, uh, especially for bike lanes throughout the city, which isn't always easy, but it is something we do. Okay, thank you and great presentation. Thanks, Karen. Um, thanks, Karen. Can, uh, she did ask about uh, sanitation department. Um, I don't think you addressed that in terms of what your partnership with them is about. And uh, if you could just briefly, Craig or... I mean, they're, they're responsible for the roadway that, you know, plowing and maintaining it and, and we work with them to leave adequate space. Um, when necessary, there, there are. Like, asking sanitation to maintain the space is a little difficult because of all the ramps. Like, every ramp's got to be clear. We need bikes to get up and down them. Um, the columns that we took really great care to plan around um, and things like that. So I, I, it's, you know, not as simple as just assigning this to DSNY and, and, and walking away and then having a problem down the road that we have to have a more meetings about to discuss. So Mike's got, Mike's team's like hands on and, you know, and we work closely there. There were both DOT teams. We've been working very closely together on this project. Okay, that that's I mean if DOT is going to take ownership of the of the the cleaning then because we've we've had issues with sanitation 
and you know not just on this but you know throughout the district where you know uh, we've had to like really get after them to to take care of things but um if you're taking if you dot is taking the responsibility obviously we're going to hold you to it because that's what we do but um we appreciate uh, i appreciate you know hearing that um you're taking ownership anyway um okay thank you uh will next uh, board member um paul kelterborn hi everyone uh thank you uh thank you dot for that presentation. I'm super excited to see these kind of safety improvements um, coming to this area. One question I had was about the um, about the width of the bike lane in my, I think it's like 4 feet in each direction. But uh, in my experience with these kind of 2 way bike lanes, especially ones that get heavily trafficked, like on Kent, for instance, it doesn't feel like it's wide enough. Um, and this 1 seems like connecting 2 bridges is going to be an important corridor for cyclists. So I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit to how you arrived at that width. Um, I think that's sort of like the, the minimum typically recommended for a bike lane. And um, I saw in the comments too that someone commented that the driving lane seemed extra wide, um, 16 feet when it probably could have been less. So I was just wondering if you could address that. That's a very good observation. Um, it has a lot to do with the ramps that we're needing to meet on both ends and the, the entrances and exits of these these driveways. They're very funky geometries. If you ever walk down, like walk throughout there, these curve extensions were, and like I said, we have to deal with a lot of columns here too. So I know you're not seeing the columns on the site plans. Um, we're trying to keep it a little bit visually clearer, but these are all a lot of things that help determine um, these widths. I, I think there might be some locations. I mean, it's a good point. I think there could be some locations we can look at making it wider for those that want to bike a little faster. Um, but that's these are the main contributors to the location of the path and the, the widths themselves. Can I I'm going to pipe in here a little bit, Craig, is that the, um, one, of, one of the differences between this and uh, Kent is the fact that it is all at one grade. So you are going to get a little bit of flexible space. Um, usually the minimum is eight feet with two foot shoulders on both sides, but because you have a ped space next to it in a lot of cases here and a buffer, um, that actually works pretty well. Uh, as far as I just want to point out that a lot of the lanes for traffic are extra wide because you need to have you need to have the ability to get out and into parking spaces. I think that that's also one of the things and I just want people as they look at the sections to understand that that's oftentimes what happens. It doesn't always show up in sectional view, but from above you'll be able to see that. Thank you. Okay, uh, Kevin Costa, you're next. Sorry, I was on mute. Hi, um, DOT, I'd like to say thank you for this great presentation. Um, this is definitely um, some of the, as many people have commented, long overdue safety um, improvements that, that we've needed for quite some time. Um, I know as a pedestrian and a cyclist that this is very welcome news and um, I'd like to highlight that. I, I think that especially, a, a great amount of detail has gone into making sure that these safety improvements are going to work, especially keeping pedestrians, cyclists, and and drivers, in 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 mind. So thank you for that. Um, I know a couple of people have brought up in the chat regarding parking, maybe having like metered parking holidays, whether that be on holidays or or weekends as a whole, or at least Sundays. Um, maybe that could be something that you can consider um and then also i wanted to echo the bike lane comments if the bike lanes could be even you know somewhat wider that would be very helpful um so if you could answer that question regarding the metered parking maybe we can um see this forward you know i think that this is really again a really great presentation that that you've 
given us today. So thank you. Um, I know that the community is waiting quite a bit for many years about this. So it's it's great that we're finally getting that that connection that's been long overdue from the K Bridge down down to Williamsburg. Thanks, Kevin. Mike, do you wanna is it the so your sure. question's about meter holidays, right? Yes. Kevin, you don't pay on Sundays, Kevin. So Sundays would be free and they're all holidays when there's in parking, you know, I'd have to go through the specific list of them, but um no, we would not be charging that. It just would be typical to what you see on the street in the meters. Um, okay. Okay. Um, last committee member is Bronwyn. Thanks, Will. And um, I wanted to just echo the thanks to DOT for this awesome um, proposal regarding safety improvements, which are so needed as a mother of two young children who I've been crossing under Meeker for six years with two young boys. And um, it is not safe, um, as everybody knows. And I really, really welcome priorities and safety improvements for our community. Um, I also think it would be an excellent idea and hope that DOT could please incorporate our community members in a walkthrough. What we saw tonight is very complicated. and looking forward to reviewing it to try and dig through some of the details, but I think understanding it in person on site, walking through some of the traffic signaling improvements um, would be super helpful to get everybody on board. Um, my question also was regarding metered parking, which I, I know this will be a big pushback from the community and from the committee. Um, and I understand the metered parking um, in the so southwestern region of the of Meeker, where there's heavy proximity to the G and L train entrances. But um, I really want to understand the justification beyond just maintenance of the of the um, bike lane and pedestrian, which obviously is critical. Um, for who you think is going to be using this metered parking, and why? Um, you know what what what's the sort of what studies have been done to justify that necessity for our community. Mike, do you want to chime in on the, the northern part meter metering away from the G train? Sure. Um, again, a lot of this is the maintenance and, and the keeping clean of the, the, the bike lane and the pedestrian walkway. You know, if we only are in half this area, we're going to be maintaining half of it. We're not going to be maintaining the area. As far as the study, there's ample parking underneath. There are people there all the time parking underneath that. Um, and it's unregulated. We feel that providing the continuity throughout the project would be something that would be most beneficial, um, not only from the parking perspective, but also from the perspective of maintaining this as a unified facility with parking, with the bike lane, with the pedestrian walkway. You know, we, we're very excited in working with the bike folks on this thing. We think this is a great project. We're looking forward to working on this and we're looking forward to, to keeping your neighborhood and this area flowing freely. Um, people coming off the K-Bridge should not have to worry about riding into some debris that some industrial company dropped off or something. So, you know, that is our rationale. Eric, this is Mary O'Domerick. I believe I have my hand raised. I don't know if it registered. I'd like to make a comment. Uh, go for it, Mary. I didn't see your hand raised, but um, yeah, go for it. Okay. I just want to go back to the parking issue and who parks there. Um, there are a lot of teachers that park along uh, Bayard and Leonard because there's a middle school there. And since parking is at a premium for them, uh, they usually park under the BQE. So I think that the principal of that school should be involved in this discussion or at least contacted because I know it'd be a hardship for teachers if there's going to be paid parking there. They absolutely cannot run out and put meters, you know, uh, money into meters and run back into the school. So that's my suggestion. Okay, any response from DOT or that or? I think that's, that's a fair request. I'm sorry, which, yeah. which, thing, which school? There's two schools over there, right? In middle school 126 on Leonard and Bear. 
Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Well, we'll take note of that and work with Rhonda on that. Uh, and someone put in the, you know, PS 110 is only like. Whatever it is, a block and a half away, a block yeah. away. That that school I am familiar with. And St. Stan's, <laughs> a lot going on in the chat here. So, yeah, there are a lot of schools that are within a block. I'm sorry, what was the first one? Was that PS 126? 126. Middle school 126. Okay. So, Rhonda, it's Thanks, middle school 126, PS 110, and St. Stanislaus. And the what's the other school that's closer to um, <clears throat> Metropolitan? Brooklyn Arbor, or no, I'm sorry, not Brooklyn Arbor. Um, the um, New York, New Williamsburg at uh, what is it, North Seventh? Yeah. What's the name of that one? We can look it up. It's like the Williams, corner, North Williamsburg North School. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. No, I don't see any more committee member, members with their hands raised. So we'll go to the general public again. I'm going okay, to send Vega on. Well, Willis, I've been I, I sent a chat. I've been waving since the beginning. It's William Vega. I like to speak. Okay, sorry, yeah. William. I didn't see your hand raised. So go for it. Okay. Um, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I appreciate all the efforts for the the bike lanes, the pedestrians. That is great. That's one mission. But there's there's three agencies that. Really need to be involved here. Sanitation, we're letting them off the hook. If they would take care of some of these streets, maintaining them, we wouldn't need all these parking meeting, parking meters, because that's what DLT is saying. Um, they need all of that that strip to be uh, metered so that they can pr properly maintain. Number two, for abandoned vehicles, sanitation and NYPD are involved. And number three is the homeless population. Okay, the last time you there was clean that strip, those homeless people were chased away by NYPD. So I really believe for this discussion going forward, NYPD needs to be involved, the homeless department, as well as sanitation, because there's more trash outside the boundaries of Meeker Avenue that's been used now as dump. So they should be coming to the community board and explaining why they can't do their job and explain to us specifically in black and white what is the partnership between DOT and sanitation. So I, I think we need to hold these agencies accountable. I appreciate all the work DLT is doing it, but this is not just what HCC that should be maintaining the, uh, the, the quarter being clean. And that's, again, we also have people there. Now I have to say this on a personal note, my, my neighbors, we go out there on Saturday nights to chase people for doing drugs there. They hang out there. Okay, so it's not safe. And, it's, we, and we just flash our flashlights to scare them away. But one, uh, this past Saturday, we scared 20 people away. I'm 66 years old, but I'm doing this to protect my uh, my neighborhood. But I shouldn't be the one having to flash a flashlight to chase away people doing drugs. And we we picked up, and I have my neighbor, the doctor, 72 syringes that was dropped off in the hospital. So those are the other issues we're not talking about is under Maker Avenue. So I know the cyclist issues and pedestrians, but there's other parts that are involved. Um, since this was constructed, it's created a hazard and safety issue on so many multi-levels. Thank you. Thanks, William. Those, those are really good points. We'll, we'll take note of those. And I, I do don't want to give the impression that we don't work with TSNY because we do. We do work really closely with them. So, but uh, we'll take note of your other other concerns and work with those. Have folks. you done any any outreach to um, Department of Homeless Services? Not at, not at this moment. No. Alyssa, please. This, this is our first step in the process. I, I do want to. I know. Wanna I know. We're effort, just so. we're just giving you guidance here. Yeah. I want Of I, course. Of course. If I can just chime in really quickly, that like. Okay. Go ahead. Just to say again that it is kind of the first step in the process, and we know that this is you know, it is very difficult to change the space underneath here. And we will be talking to DSNY. This will start up a conversation. It will start up a new conversation, hopefully a better conversation. There'll now be more eyes on the street down there. And it actually changes the dynamic a little bit. So um, I, I just think that, that that's important to realize we can't solve everything as, as DOT. And it's not going to be perfect. But I, I got to say, by putting crosswalks and creating a way for people to use the space, it does change the way the space is viewed by everybody and that will be an overall positive okay, great okay so we are going to go to the public we are running over on this item um, we did uh, gain 10 minutes that um, we've just used um, because item one was postponed
<clears throat> However, um, the usual two minutes, um, we really have to keep the time. And, I, and I'm going to keep it to if, if people were following, all the committee members asked their question and got a response within a minute, minute and a half. So I'm going to ask the public, I'm going to remind the public that any comments uh, you put in the chat um, will be part of the report and part of the record. But I just want to uh, remind everyone that DOT is coming back to the community board next Tuesday to the full board to let the entire board uh, see the same presentation. And there will be time to sign up to speak um, at the full board meeting as well, where you will be heard by the full board. So I just want to make that clear before anybody is upset that I had to cut off time or whatever. You will be heard. Um, it's just a question okay, of so how, a, and, how do I you know, and we have to, and we have to keep to, time. we have to keep the time. So, um, setting my alarm Close for one minutes. minute, um, just, and, uh, anyway, so that's it. So we'll go back to, Will. I think, yeah, maybe, maybe we can take the presentation yeah, down. Is there any objection to taking the presentation down? Committee, they anybody? Be recording it. Okay, uh, please take down the uh, uh, the presentation so it's just easier to see who's looking for, to be recognized. Thank oh, you, Craig. I stopped my video and then stop, uh, stop sharing. We, we don't we don't use WebEx all that much. I forgot how to use it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Most people don't. Welcome so. Um, <laughs> uh, we. Uh, I'm happy to start here. So uh, first one is Maureen Bowler. Hi, um, I'll be brief. Um, I think the first thing is you need to remember that you cannot take pedestrians and bicyclers and put them in the same space. Bicyclers have their particular needs and characteristics. Pedestrians have theirs. They don't mix. Um, the second thing is that the bike lane should not be going down Meeker. The bike lane should go across Apollo down Nassau, all the way to um, Bedford, where it will stop at Broadway, and you have two you have two ways bicycling. Any car that's parked there on that those streets needs to go under the BQE. Needs to be cleaned up. They need to have um, chargers because everyone's going to be switching to electrical cars. And it cannot cost the people who live in the neighborhood anything. And I want just one tiny other thing. I want to remind people as gently as I possibly can. This is a unique neighborhood. It does more for the city of New York than most. And if we ask for something, we're pretty humble about it and we should get it. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Mary. Um, or Maureen, I'm sorry. Um, Will, next. You're muted, Will. Sorry, uh, Christina Naplatarski is next. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, so, first of all, I, I want to say thanks to DOT for a really thorough presentation. Um, but I also really want to say a, a huge thank you and a big shout out to um, residents in North Brooklyn who have worked for years to reimagine the space under the BQE. Uh, it's, it's not lost on any of us that Meeker Avenue has long been a dividing line in North Brooklyn. Um, it's also been extremely dangerous as the stretch of road right way and has taken many lives from us. So I'm pleased, first of all, with the safety improvements and the bike lane that are included in this current proposal. I think they're really long overdue and in some cases could be life saving. Um, but I also want to say that I really hope that we can continue the conversation about how we can better utilize the space, including a conversation about how we can potentially move away from using this space for parking in the future um, and ways in which we can engage other agencies when it comes to a comprehensive long term plan. So I think what William Vega brought up before. Um, looping in other agencies that that will help, um, such as DHS, I think that's a great idea, um, and potentially looping in other agencies who can help us make this um, more of an environmentally sustainable corridor uh, and and contributing to our long long term sustainability in North Brooklyn 
um, by incorporating things such as stormwater drainage infrastructure. Thank you. And Great. For those of you, you that yeah. heard that chime, that that is the hook. So when you hear that chime, that's the hook. Okay, go ahead, Will. Thank you, District Leader. Um, next up is Katie Denny Horowitz. Hey, sorry, you caught me when I was away for a moment. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know I, I echo uh, Christina's uh, comments about, you know, this has such, been such a long process for both the DOT and the community. And so, um, you know, like other community members, I'm uh, pleased with what we're seeing. And I was also pleased to hear that uh, it's sort of the first step um, in rethinking the space underneath, um, you know, underneath the BQE, um, an important corridor between, you know, the, under the Cambridge Park, which we're working on, you know, all through the neighborhood to be able to uh, connect these disparate spaces, uh, which is something that, uh, you know, from the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, that what's, uh, you know, a neighborhood wide initiative we're working on. Um, the other thing, and I had mentioned this um, at our last, um, at the last presentation of DOT, which was entirely paid parking, um, was you know to work together also with uh, with the folks at DOT who put together the uh, the L space toolkit, um, you know, which was uh, you know a 2019 major initiative uh, for the agency to rethink uh, and transform the spaces underneath elevated expressways, and I think given the resources and the time that's being spent on this space, there are a lot of elements that could be used in that toolkit here. Um, that, um, you know, with this plan, while it's a, while it's an amazing 1st step aren't yet yet there and we heard some in the chat, things like green infrastructure. Um, you know, more activation. These are all things that I understand, uh, you know, cost a lot of money. Thanks, um, Katie. <laughs> thanks, Eric. Sorry, okay, I, I, go I, on. Gotta keep folks, I gotta keep folks on time. You know what? Can you, um, I appreciate you know, the I, time. I to... Thank you. Listen, I talked to Bronwyn a little bit about the toolkit I think you're talking about. Um, and if you have a link for that, um, if you want to throw that up in the chat, that would be that would be great because I did get a chance to look at it briefly, but not in depth. And I think people will that don't that aren't aware of it would would benefit from looking at it. So if you can if you have that link and you or you want to throw it in the chat, that'd be great. Uh, okay. Will, who's next? Yep, Kevin Lachera. Okay, one minute, Kevin. Good luck. Oh, geez. Um, thank you yep, everybody. Yep. And thank you to DOT. You know, um, I think that when, when you came here last time, um, obviously folks were, were very upset because what was being brought was, was paid parking without any of the desperately needed things. This community has been asking for, for the better part of a decade and has needed for decades. Um, you know, I do what people are saying on the paid parking and I really would like to see a further conversation about ways in which, um, we can do a mix, um, between paid and unpaid, especially in areas closer to schools, um, or in, uh, to, to residential areas. Um, you know, because that is a need here. There is a mixed uh, need under the BQE. Um, so, uh, I want to highlight the bike lane with issue. I get the 4 foot and 4 foot, um, uh, concern, uh, but I think on an active roadway, that makes some sense, but under the BQE where you have a lot of space, there's plenty of room to have a six foot and a six foot lane in that space, along with a really quality pedestrian path that is eight foot, um, you know, and eager to, to work together on that. Uh, I want to highlight the signal at monitor, deeply important and needs to be a part of this plan. Uh, there's just a crosswalk out in the middle of the street that basically connects the space around the neighborhood closer to Cooper Park and the neighborhood closer to McGulrick Park, and it's just out there in the open. Um, I want to say that we should really also be thinking about the spaces outside of just this corridor, but like basically on the neighborhood sides of the street on both sides. And I would like DOT to tell us a little bit about that if that's possible. Something like the the Driggs, the Morgan Meeker Driggs slip or um the crosswalks, um, or I guess the corners on the opposite sides of the street from the actual yeah. BQE corridor itself. Does that make sense? Um I, and then I guess also you, stormwater green infrastructure. Uh, we want you working with DEP on this. We want public plazas in these spaces. But I guess question would be, is there anything that DOT is looking at? I didn't see it in the plan to increase pedestrian safety, cyclist safety, driver safety um, um, on the Kevin, neighborhood that's it. side of the street. That's the question. Okay. 
Uh, I mean, quick, quick response with DOT on any of that. Yeah, I mean, most let's a good observation. Most of the curb extensions and are along the corridor as well. You know, we can take a harder look at the north, the north sides of them. We we are upgrading the ramps to be ADA where feasible. Um, but I mean, that's a good point, Kevin. And I can take a look to see where extensions or what what improvements we can do. Um, but the main thing we want to focus on is getting those crossings working with the left turn signals. Um, and that is taking up a lot of scope. So I, I just, I do want to make that clear that a, a significant amount of work has to go into making it operational. I've safe. walked it a million times. This is vital and really important and it's going to save lives. The crossings are a huge deal. You guys, like, I gotta say, like Craig has spent. Like, basically a year working on this with a lot of our very talented staff and that that's really tough. And I do think it kind of opens the door for a lot of the other improvements that you were talking about. Yeah, I, I don't want that to go unrecognized, Craig, like. Looking at this and talking about this for, you know, years and years and years. And so, so it's so complicated and um, it's, it's okay. so much of it is great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, and yeah, the, the work definitely shows Craig, you really. This it's a lot. <laughs> it's really <laughs> well done. Um, okay. So, uh, will next. Yeah, well, I just want to also make sure DOT, there is a lot going on in the chat, but there are also a few people that have are putting their comments in as opposed to speaking. Right, well, let's let's do this. Anyway, let's just do this. just want them to to acknowledge that if they have the ability. Yeah, um, well, let, let's do this. So because I'm gonna uh, cut and paste the chat um, at the end, okay. I'll I'll rifle through it and I'll submit it to Craig and Rhonda um, for follow up and any questions that they can either answer or be prepared for next Tuesday. Um, we'll, we'll work that way. Okay. So folks don't, don't be upset that like you didn't get your question in or whatever, but we're going to, we're going to make our, our best effort to get your questions answered. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Will next. Up next is Philip Leff. Hey, good evening, everyone. And thank you to DOT for the work on this. Um, we've just learned that this past April was the deadliest month for cyclists and pedestrians since the vision zero program began. As the city reopens more people on our roads, uh, these numbers will probably get worse. More transformative projects like this are needed urgently. We need this project. We need it as soon as we can. And I'm hoping that the 1st phase of this is able to connect to the existing bike network, at least to uh, Manhattan Avenue or Leonard street. Um, also like to, um, suggest improved lighting, um, just the, the dankness and darkness of the space is a huge factor in it's being unsafe on so many levels. I am hoping uh, that, um, increased lighting will be a part of this as well. Um, I am unfortunately a former, uh, North Brooklyn resident, but I will use this path. Almost every time I do commute to the Kosciusko Bridge, as I'm now right over in Sunnyside, I'm on this, I'm um, on my this phone, will be a critical interborough corridor and, um, for commuters. I'm on like a community board meeting. Thank you, DOT. This I'm needs to happen now. Oh, yeah, because I'm like, so, oh, you can't. Denise, see please people. mute yourself. Thank you. Okay, any response to Phil's questions? There's a lot in there. I, I believe we did start upgrading the lighting underneath, but I, I can confirm and before we and Mike that I believe that's the case, right? We yeah, started. we saw I started the there was a difficulty with kind of trying to get the power there. It, it's a real challenge, but we are committed to improving and providing lighting under there. It's a safety aspect. But irrespective of what happens, it's gotta be well lit. Great. Uh thank you, Phil. Um next up is Jed Poster. Hi, everybody. First, want to echo Rails' thoughts. Appreciate the thoroughness um, and uh, sensitivity to the place of the presentation, um, or the plan, rather. Uh, two very quick questions. The first, they're both about enforcement. Uh, are there any plans to either, and I apologize if this came up, I may have missed it, um, to either physically protect the bike lane from the traffic on Meeker Avenue, as we know the cars tend to go fast, particularly coming off the highway, um, either with concrete bollards or flexi gates or just something to create some separation. And the second is similar, which is, are there any plans to install speed or red light cameras at any of the intersections where their work will be done? So the second part of it, I'm not aware of any red light camera plans. Um, the first part is, I'm, I think you're referring to the on-street portion close to the bridge. We are going right. to look at 
um, adding Jersey barriers, a harder edge there um, too, that requires maintenance issues and um, turns and all this stuff. So we hope to have an answer on that um, soon. Thank you. I was also referring to the portion along Neeker, even though it's slightly grade separated. I'm thinking of the bike, the newer bike lane out in Flushing Avenue, which has some slight grade separation, but particularly at night, uh, yeah. cars coming around that curve who may be less attentive or may not see as well. It's somewhat difficult to distinguish the bike lane, particularly because it's black with the uh, yellow stripe down the middle. Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, even the Meeker Avenue portion, I think, would benefit from, again, physical separation. The Jersey barriers work for sure. And thank you. Yeah, for being responsible. Sure. No problem. Okay. It's, it's not, hang on. It's 9.45. Um, this item has now been discussed for 70 minutes. Uh, I'll give it another 10, so that will allow 10 more speakers, um, and then we have to move on to the next item. So, uh, Will, se who's next? Se 7.45 for the record. Um, uh, yeah, right. Up, yeah, yeah. 9.45. Oh, okay. uh, well. Wish up next is, uh, okay, one, one second, Simon. You got to get in queue here. We got a lot of people who have been waiting okay. to speak. So, I'm up next is on. Lauren Barth. Hello. Um, Go for it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, my name is Lauren Barth. I've been living here like 12 years and I used to be a member of the Lions Club here as a secretary. And I just can't believe how little the community feels included in all this. So you guys said you're taking away 680 spots, which is more than half of the spots that are over there and converting all of them from ASP to paid parking. And then the DOT rep said that they're going to come here daily for maintenance, parking, bike lanes. No one maintains anything here. And then you were asked, they were asked what studies they did to prove that all of this was necessary and would make sense and is what the community wanted. And they, we were told that no studies were made. It was just based on observation. So I'd like to know when those observations were made and what actual facts we're using to, to take away all of this and make a basically parking lot for illegal activity under the BQE. Evan, how are you doing? It's already a parking lot. And it's, and it's 680 total with less than half being repurposed. Right, and you're going to then make all of that metered parking to put more money on car people that drive cars anyway. So basically right, this is gonna all just actually like mean it's going to actually mean that parking. there's more parking turnover so that'll actually be a lot better and there'll be a lot less parking. How how so explain? When you have meters people can't park there for days on end without moving. Okay, so what about people that live over there? They got to wake up at the crack of dawn to change their parking every day? Or they just can't park there yes. anyway or they have to pay to park where they already live? Effectively, yes, but I thought your question was about how we were adding more parking, how we were making it a parking lot. No, I was saying you're taking so much parking away and you're doing nothing for the people. Okay, thank, okay. You, thank you, Lauren. Craig, you can finish that answer. Thank, thank you for what? Answer my question. There were no studies done, just observations. So where's the, where's the data behind this? There is none. Right, so we'll just move on and ignore now. That's what you guys love to do in Community Board One. Okay, thank you, Lauren. We're, that's enough. Anytime, um, I'm here for the party. Great, next. Uh, up next is Eric Radeski. Hey, Eric, how are you doing? Hey, Eric, good to see you and uh, everyone <laughs> else. Uh, Craig, Ted, um, you know, you guys know me, I know you. I've worked with the community board and DOT for a long time when I worked for Joe Lentall. Uh, Ted, I remember it's probably 10 years ago we were working on uh, the Greenway issues over on Kent Avenue. Um, so I feel like I'm known as a reasonable person and my concern is the, the removal of all that parking, half of it, and then uh, metering the other half because we have to expect that the cars that are there right now are going to circle around the neighborhood looking for parking somewhere else. And that just seems like a detrimental effect to the rest of Greenpoint and Williamsburg on either side of the BQE. I mean, 
maybe over the course of many years, there will be less car ownership. But in the immediate future, people are just going to circle around and around looking for, you know, a free parking space and it's going to become a nightly ritual. So, I think that requires uh, an environmental impact study to find out what the actual impact to our air quality is going to be. Um, all right, I'll wrap it up there so other people can talk. Point, Eric, thank you. Uh, Craig or uh, Mark, Mike, you want to say anything? There's no charge in the evening, so people coming home from work, they can park there overnight. No, they're not going to be charged for that. It's like any other immediate parking field. Yes. No, I do understand that, but anyone who needs to get up and move their car by 7 a.m. is then going to do that as well. And remember, it's also ASP there as it is now, so it realistically is supposed to be. Well, ASP is only two days a week on either side. Uh, can you maybe uh, a compromise here? Is going back and looking at the hours um, just because it's 7 to 10 in in other places doesn't mean it has to be 7 to 10 here. Um, so, I'd love it if you could take that back for uh, for review and maybe uh, play with the hours a little. Of course, it's not a problem. All right, cool. Okay. Yeah, Next. Only Eric. Okay. Uh, thank you, Eric. Up next is uh, Dan Keezer. Hello, good evening. I um, wanted to thank KOT for this presentation. Um, really supportive of it. I really like it, especially like echoing the bike lane width, especially when there is there. Done across my self say that commuters, meaning cyclist commuters, do ride fast, and so. The smaller the bike lanes, the more collisions you're going to end up having with actual cyclists, uh, cyclists on cyclists, essentially. Also concerned about the homeless getting pushed out. So, yeah, I want to echo that um, and the DA's um, support there. Be treated with respect and dignity. Um, and I also want to echo the approved lighting. Um, very uh, and would make this space way more safer, way safer. And thanks. Fine, thank you. Um, okay, uh, let's see. We have four more. So next, next in the queue is Constancia. Hi everyone. Um, thanks for the for the presentation and for the hope that we can be safer as cyclists. Um, and pedestrians uh, on this important um, divide that hopefully will be bridged soon. What I wanted to point out just from my perspective as someone who uses all modes of transportation, including a car, you know, there is actually more sort of, you know, interconnectedness that I think is being highlighted here between what affects cars and um, cyclists and pedestrians. So if I choose to take my bike because I feel safe crossing Meeker, and you are the car that's going down Apollo because you're trying to catch the light to get on the on-ramp. I'm the car that's not there that allows you to catch the light because I'm on my bike and I'm somewhere else and I'm not adding to that traffic. Same if you're coming down Morgan on your way back from wherever you were, or if you're on you know, Humboldt and you're trying to take that on-ramp. I'm the car that's not there because I'm on a bike. So let's just keep that in mind um, for all of our sakes because this is all, all you know, part of one ecosystem here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Uh, next in the queue is Luke Olson. Hey, Luke. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll try to keep accountable. Um, one uh, is a really, really dangerous corridor that's divided communities that are on IRs, uh, and we need pedestrian sites, um, to safety improvements. Lots of things that you can do opening up space, removing parking. Adding protected bike lane, adding infrastructure, adding bio whales, adding light, adding programming, adding other things that I can't think of at the moment. Things that we can do with parking spaces. So I think that we need to be imaginative about how we use our, our public spaces. In the short term, people are dying every day, being injured. In the long term, as many people have raised, 
uh, we're facing environmental catastrophe if we don't uh, wisen up pretty soon. So I think. I'm sorry, we we lost you for part of that. I don't know if, been, if everybody heard. I, I I think we got the flavor. That was out, the best part so. of what I said, actually. Um, <laughs> you know what? No, send, my internet been coming out. Send it to me. Sure, chat it was off, but yeah. yeah sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, my internet connection is a little off. That's all right. Uh, okay, thanks, Luke. Uh, Will two, last two. Okay, Rachel. last two is Rachel Albeski. Albetsky. Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> No worries, Will. Um, hey, Rachel here. Um, anyway, first, thank you, DOT, so much for coming with this plan. Um, you know, we in the community have asked for a bike lane, a safe route connection from, you know, the K Bridge to the Williamsburg Bridge for almost 10 years, and I have been part of almost all of those 10 years. So this is like such a big moment to see you coming with this plan and addressing those safety concerns that we've had in the community. Um, you know, we've been stuck on Meeker Island. We've seen that there's not like long enough crossing times. You're addressing that, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I'd love to just, you know, the parking conversation does not matter to me. We have the safety improvements and that is what we really have been asking for for all of this time. And I think it's great to see that. Um, I really appreciate the detail that you and the thought that has gone into making sure that we can have this safe passage. And I just wanna make sure that we can continue this conversation. Um, you know, We are here as the advocates and supporters of this plan. Love to be at the table with you guys and you know continue the discussion. I loved how you said it was a starting point for a broader vision. You know we have a much broader vision for things like play space, for greater traffic calming, for green infrastructure. Um, one thing love to see addressed is maybe some traffic calming, also on drigs, so we're not just seeing people kind of constantly speeding. I know that's not on Meeker, but I think it, it's part of the same problem. So. Yeah, I love to just see us kind of building off this plan and seeing it as a starting point for more improvements for our community. And thank you again. Thank you, Rachel. Last public member, and just to remind everybody, <clears throat> where DOT is coming back to the full board next Tuesday, you can sign up to speak there. And uh, you're, I will take the chat comments and submit them to DOT for um, for any responses they can give. Uh, who's last, okay. uh, Will? Well, before I announce the last speaker, I also just want to, there are a few representatives from elected officials offices, but we want to have them oh, chime yes, in as well. Thank you. But yeah. the last, okay, yeah. So, so let's, let's do this. We'll have, sorry, hang on. So let's do this. Let's have the last public speaker and then we'll recognize the, the electeds um, and their representatives. And then um, uh, uh, we'll, sorry, we'll, <laughs> we'll do the last speaker. Then we'll hear Simon Weiser. Then we'll hear the electeds and then we'll close the item. Thank you. Great. Okay. So last public speaker is Jeff. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, I've, I've been around as we've been advocating for safety and public space improvements along Meeker Avenue. Um, you know, it's been eight to 10 years, you know, ever since we kicked off our street safety forums and Meeker Avenue was consistently recognized as, you know, one of the highest in demand in the community for safety improvements. Um, we envisioned a lot of great uses for the public space, um, but this project addresses the fundamental safety issue, especially for pedestrians and cyclists, that was brought up in DOT's safety study earlier in the presentation. Um, I think the data in that study regarding the safety really speaks to how important this project is. Um, so thank you so much, DOT. Um, we've been waiting on this for a long time. Um, and I really look forward to seeing these safety improvements. Thank you. Pretty sweet. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and Jeff, thanks and to all the public that's worked on this issue for so long. Um, thank you, because uh, with with your constant effort, you know, we've we've worked with DOT to to see this happen. Um, there's you know a way to go, but um, really, you guys have. You also been there from from the beginning, so thanks. Okay, and that's my timer. All right, uh, Simon, you're recognized, and then we'll go to um, to the electeds. 
Yeah, you hear me? Sir, go ahead. You can, you can, you can hear me? Please go ahead. You can hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. So thank you. Uh, I would like to thank DOT for putting so much work into this plan. I, I just want to, uh, uh, I think Willis mentioned before, that before implementing the plan, I think it would be uh, very helpful if, you know, board members and many stakeholders would have an actual walkthrough and see visually, you know, uh, what we're talking about. And, you know, it would just be, uh, you know, before it gets the final um, approval, we should, you know, see it actual what the plan is. I think a walkthrough will be very helpful. Thank you again, DOT. Simon, and yeah, uh, I'll pick up on that too. It'd be great to schedule that um, with you in the near future and, and do that walkthrough. Okay, so um, we will hear from elected. I, I can see Jen Gutierrez. I don't think Antonio's here, so we will recognize Jen Gutierrez. Um, please go ahead. Hey y'all, thank you so much, Eric. I will abide by the one minute rule anyway. Um, I just want to thank the DOT for the super thoughtful presentation. I was pleasantly surprised um, when you detailed all of the bike lanes, the safety mitigations, the increased safety crosswalks for pedestrians and the lighting. Um, I think that that is going to be really powerful for our community and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I'm curious to know what the timeline is considering uh, it's a vision zero priority and we're about to have a new administration. Um, but I do have, uh, two, three technical questions and if the OT can respond to you, Eric, and you can get it out to us at some point. Um, one is, I, I just want to make sure I didn't see things, but there was a slide. I think where the presentation was along Neeker, um, and maybe Kingsland where to me, it looked like that there was a pedestrian lane buffering the one lane of cars and the the two way i i don't know if that's correct um but if that's what i saw if we could just have dot explain why that is um i'm not sure if it's because of turning um but i'm just curious uh if pedestrians are exactly are going to be kind of buffering both um i just also want to amplify the call for green infrastructure i mean honestly this is going to be a huge project and i think it's a it's a missed opportunity um if the city doesn't really prioritize implementing green infrastructure green jobs opportunities for our community um, by kind of doing this whole project holistically um and then the the last question is expected revenue from the metered parkings um, I think we asked this before at the October meeting. I'm not sure if DOT has been able to come up with the numbers, um, but I think it'll help us as neighbors kind of understand the bigger context as we face, a, you know, another budget deficit, um, especially when DOT is stressing maintenance. Um, it would be helpful for us to understand uh, what the expected like profit for the city um, is going to be with these proposed uh, metered uh, spots. That's it. Thank you. You know, let's, Craig, if you can answer the first question um, that she had, and then maybe we can take the other two questions for the record, unless you have a quick answer for them. Um, Jen, where did you, you said Meeker and Kingsland? Um, there's. The yeah, I, yeah I, I, I think that's a little confusing because that's where, that's where the pedestrian path first starts there. So you're, you're, it's not a buffer per se, it's just next to the bike lane um, in the path. In, in the parking field, sorry, in the parking field. So it's bike path, pedestrian path, and then parking, the parking field, if that makes sense. So I, and again, we'll, we'll put this online and it might be more clear if, when you go through it too. Yeah. And we're coming back, obviously. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, uh, what who uh i see ben solitaire i'll recognize you next uh unless the councilman is here um go ahead hi yeah thank you um yeah a great presentation by dot the the under under the bqb right now is uh, is a blight as several people have said uh in the chat and um i think this will be a huge step towards making it a safer space if it's not safe now we need to work to make it a safer space and it'll definitely protect bikers and pedestrians uh, on this path. Um, I will echo a little bit of what Jen said as far as the inf green infrastructure, as other people said also, we do need to look at that in the future. 
totally interested in what the revenue projections are. I don't know why we're not just directly addressing that question. It's, it, there's obviously a, a, a factor here in that. Um, as we do this project, and I said this at DOT before, um, there are the people under there. Uh, we do need to treat them respectfully and make sure that that is um, a part of the plan as we move forward with in implementing this project. Um, and I hope we would take into consideration some of the concerns about the metered parking that people have expressed, whether it's it's holidays, certain uh, regulations. But I hope we we view that more closely. And I don't know if you're ready. You probably will be ready in a week, but um, but uh, to sometime get an answer on on how we can modify that so there's a lesser impact, but uh, uh, long awaited improvements, very uh, happy with the plan. And I think I believe the council member uh, also echoes that and um, thank you very much. Ben, uh, is there anyone from uh, the state senator's office or the uh, assembly offices? Uh, Alvin is here and has, has his Alvin. hand up. Okay, Alvin. Go ahead. Hey, everyone, can you guys hear me? I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, hi, everybody at CB1. I just wanted to give credit where credit's due on DOT. Craig um, and the team, you, you clearly put together a good, pretty good comprehensive plan here. Um, but the, the, there's a lot to like here, and, and it's important that we point out that Vision Zero had to address BQE section. This is one of the deadliest and most dangerous sections in North Brooklyn um, and, and very excited that it's finally being addressed. But more importantly, pedestrian and cyclist safety being made priority is something that the state senator is, is, is very passionate on. As, as we all know, the Department of Transportation is for everyone that's commuting. It's not just drivers. Um, so prioritizing something as public space um uh public corridors something that there's a dearth of in north brooklyn is definitely something that that we would love to have more conversations on green infrastructure considering we're trying to move away from the the, the lack of green infrastructure in north brooklyn um would also be something that we would love to continue to have conversation on but looking very much forward to 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 the next meeting and and what the ot comes up with because there's a lot to like here um thank you all Thanks, Alvin. Um, anyone from uh, Assemblywoman Gallagher or? Um... Yeah, Leslie is here. Hi, everyone. Okay, Leslie. Sorry, there's background noise, a lot of honking over here. Um, I commented before, but just wanted to reiterate my point. Um, so we strongly support all the bike and pedestrian safety improvements as part of this plan. Um, and thanks DOT for the great presentation. Um, obviously, this area is super dangerous, both for bicyclists and pedestrians um, and so this is really long overdue um, and also a big priority for us is just to keep pushing for green infrastructure and open space here in the future as much as possible just knowing you know how little open space there is in our community and also how polluting the bqe is um, so yeah thanks great thanks and i apologize for my terrible mic getting complaints <laughs> sorry about it uh, okay. Um, any other electeds? Uh, yeah, Eric, can I say something really quick? This is Alex Rodriguez from the council member of Reynoso's office. Sure, go ahead. So, um, you know, like, uh, like everybody has said, uh, it's very supportive of the improvement. Thank you to DOT. I just need to digest. I need to review again the plans. I need to discuss that with the council member. Uh, but yes, I think it should be first and the priority that uh, what we're doing here. But my main concern is about maybe uh, uh, jurisdiction. So um, when DOT says that it's going to maintain on the need the BQE, what about like the capital projects that the, 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 the area needs, like the rainwater or like construction happening? So on that capital project, is DOT, like city DOT, will be in charge of that or how state DOT will be invested. So the reason I'm saying this is because we've been doing walkthroughs for years, uh, DHS, uh, DSNY, uh, DOT, uh, council member Reynoso, council member Levin's office. And at the end of the day, and I was including CB1, but at the end of the day, it's a jurisdiction issue. And I'm really concerned that it's not going to change anything outside of like uh, charging people for having meters there. 
uh, uh, you know, quality of life and everything that is happening down there, down there in the BQE. Okay, that was it. Craig, do you have a ready answer for that? Or Ted? Or Mike or anybody? I had a hard time. Mike, hearing. Mike, Mike, do you have do you have um can you hear me now? Sorry. Mike, do you have the projections for uh for what the parking is gonna draw in? Oh we it's not another it's an occupancy rate and it depends on it. It's difficult to come up with something because nobody's paying there right now. So it'd be difficult to come up with. But all the money and the revenue that's collected goes into the general fund and it's used for everything, the bioswale, the the work that's done is paid for out of the general fund. Every penny that's collected in the meter, that's where it goes for the entire city. They overlap. Okay. Uh, some area of the BQE is like state DOT. So that how it will be funded? We, we, we have been working closely with state DOT, Alexis. I, I do want to say, say that. Uh, this this is incredibly hard, and as somebody who's been doing this for years, uh, like I'm going to just say that, like I'm going to basically say the same thing I said before. It's a good first step. Working with state DOT on bioswales on something that is as big as the BQE is very difficult, and hopefully this will make it a little bit easier. Um, I would be lying to you if I told you that this was a simple, you know, like that we could just. We'll pay for it now and it'll all we're taking ownership and we're going to make it happen. No, they, they, we're still going to have to work on that. And this is just the 1st step. Thank you so much. Okay, any, any other, any other electeds in the room? I think we just need Kavanaugh's office and we're done. Right? Or uh, Maritza Davila is anybody from her office here? Okay, in that. Hearing none, um, I'm going to close this item. I want to thank DOT. This, uh, you know, I, I went right into the why are we having paid parking, but um, I really do want you to know. Um, sorry if you can't hear me. That um, you know, this is a lot of work. Craig, Ted, everybody on the team. Um, I appreciate it. Um, you've heard from the public; they appreciate it, um, and we're looking forward to better things uh, coming out of this. So we'll see you next Tuesday, and look for those questions. And um, thanks again. Thanks for your time. Okay, uh, next is open streets, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, okay, so uh, we're gonna go to move on to open streets now. It is now 8.13. Um, I had 30 minutes for this discussion. Um, we will try to keep it to 30 minutes or as close to 30 minutes as we can. Um, uh, so the, the, the purpose for, for this is, uh, open streets updates on program status from DOT, um, from the 94th precinct and from Captain Fahey at the 94th precinct and Ms. Uh, uh, Sandra Sanchez from FDNY. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll take it, uh, DOT first, um, any updates to where the plan stands, any, um, uh, any proposals for heading into the summer? Uh, what's going on? Kyle? Thank you, Eric. Yep, got it now. Go. How is everybody doing? Yeah. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, I, yeah, I, I six months strong now, so i um, always so happy to be here at CB1. We have a very short presentation that we'd like to go through that really just summarizes all of the outreach we've done, what we've heard, and um, also start to talk about what some next steps are for uh, North Brooklyn Open Streets. So I'm gonna share my screen now. Let me just pull up the presentation. Okay, make it full screen. Um, all right, so tonight, uh, like I said, we're going to just briefly go over some program updates. Um, I'm sure many of you who are paying close attention to the open streets program overall have heard a lot of exciting updates about the sort of general open streets program. Um, so there's a lot of really great things to make this program even more successful and continue to use it as a tool um, for recovery as, as we all recover from uh, the COVID-19 pandemic here in New York City. 
So before I touch on all of the, the outreach and things like that, I did want to sort of just go through a quick refresher on what open streets looks like in CB1, uh, as well as how open streets work. So on the screen now is a map of uh, all the open streets that have existed in North Brooklyn in one way or another over the last year. Not all of these are currently being executed by uh, a community partner or the DOT or NYPD, but like I said, over the last year, these have existed as open streets. Uh, we have, you know, some of our flagship corridors like Barry, Driggs, Russell, um, Sharon Street that are managed in coordination with our community partners, uh, as well as Graham Avenue that is managed by a community partner, uh, Concord Hill, a restaurant there. Uh, so we have quite a variety of different types of open streets uh, all across uh, Community Board 1. Like I said, we work in close coordination with community partners. This is a slide that I pulled from the workshop. Um, so if you were here uh, or if you attended the workshops back in February, you'll recognize this slide from before. Uh, but we just sort of want to reiterate that our community partners are really the backbone to the success of this program. And we are really committed to supporting them as much as we possibly can um, to continue to make this program a success and, and, like I said, help folks recover from this pandemic. Um, these are people that we all know in a lot of ways. They are our neighbors, they are community based organizations, businesses, and other stakeholders that come uh, from all different parts of North Brooklyn to work collaboratively on open streets and creating public space for all types of people to use. Um, and really, these uh, individuals stepped in when the city was uh, not able to really take on the robust management of open streets. Uh, last year, our resources were extremely limited, um, so we're really sort of uh, lucky to have such, such fabulous folks working with us to make sure that this program is a success. Um, and we are really looking forward to working with everyone on, on the success of this program and its sort of onward development. There are two types of open streets within the program. The vast majority across North Brooklyn and uh, CB1 are the temporary limited local access open streets. These are the streets that are bike and pedestrian corridors, but they still allow for limited vehicle access, parking, uh, deliveries, pickups, drop-offs, emergency access, accessory, things like that. So the vast majority are the ones that are on the left side of the screen uh, called temporary limited local access. The only temporary full closure that we have currently in uh, Brooklyn CB1 is on Graham Avenue uh, that is managed in coordination with the restaurant Concord Hill, um, which has been really successful in making sure that those uh, restaurants have the ability to operate safely and hopefully generate a little bit more revenue to help them recover from this pandemic. So now let's get into the sort of information about all the outreach that we've been doing in North Brooklyn, as well as what we've heard as uh, we've conducted this outreach over the last year. So to summarize, I, I would say that DOT has really done a series of different types of robust engagement strategies. Um, in, in my uh, six years at DOT, this is definitely one of the most intense engagement um, opportunities that I've had the pleasure to work on. And I really want to underscore that DOT has and will continue to be committed to doing as much outreach as possible so we can continue to sort of take as many perspectives into sort of consideration as we develop and, and refine these programs. So to just summarize, I want to just touch on all the different types of outreach that we have done. Uh, first and foremost, of course, is Brooklyn uh, CB1 uh, Transportation Committee. Like I said, we've been coming here for many, many months. Um, and we'll, we're happy to come back in the future, uh, as we always do, to continue to hear your feedback about open streets. We've held various types of stakeholder meetings with individual restaurant uh, res <laughs> residents, um, uh, groups of residents, and other types of stakeholders at sort of different times all throughout the last year uh, to make sure that we are hearing all the different types of concerns, opportunities, issues, successes, everything and anything in between. Uh, from different types of stakeholders. There was a survey that was facilitated uh, starting at the end of 2020 into uh, the winter. We heard from over 2,000 folks. Um, that actually was extended to March. So the uh, word on the screen is actually inaccurate. We did actually extend it back to March. Uh, so that is uh, how we were able to get over 2,000 um, open street survey responses, which I'll touch on in the next slide. 
Uh, many on the call tonight might know about the workshops that we held via Zoom back in February. We had well over 200 participants in both of those workshops, uh, between uh, both of those workshops rather, um, where people were able to provide feedback, un unpack the feedback that they gave in the survey, and really just make sure that we were uh, hearing all the different types of access needs and opportunities that might exist on these corridors. We are always working in close coordination with our agency partners who I'm uh, joined by tonight from the NYPD, the fire department, and also the Department of Sanitation. Uh, we are regularly checking in and collaborating on any issues as needed. And we have a very close working relationship with the precincts, uh, with the fire department and, and, and local sanitation garages. So we're, we're happy to continue with that interagency coordination. And I wanna stress that we really do a lot of behind the scenes work uh, to make sure that these go off without a hitch. Uh, from DOT's perspective, we are regularly inspecting all of these open streets. Myself, my colleagues, and uh, our contractors are making sure that these are seamlessly being executed to our, their standards and, and sort of our expectations. Uh, as we've heard over the last year, there was also a need to do a lot of in-person engagement to make sure that we were uh, you know, overcoming the digital divide. Not everyone has access to technology uh, to participate in these types of community outreach uh, sort of opportunities that we've been restricted to because of the pandemic over the last year. So we did do a few in-person engagement opportunities along Berry Street uh, with our street ambassador team, where we heard from a couple hundred individuals while they were out there on the street when folks were able to take the survey. Tomorrow, the last item to touch on is that we have a check-in with all of the restaurants and bars along Berry Street. We really want to sort of cultivate a really strong partnership with those restaurants um, to make sure that they're working in coordination with us and, and sort of making sure that they're community players on these open streets and, and continuing to sort of be a great sort of complement to the Bear Street open street in a lot of ways, but also making sure that they are being a good neighbor as well. Um, so that's planned for tomorrow um, and we're looking forward to that conversation. So to summarize what we heard in the survey and as well uh, the workshop, we did get over 2,000 surveys. Back when I originally presented this data at the workshop, we were at about 1,600. Uh, since the workshop, we were able to hear from about 500 more individuals, including those um, that were able to take the survey on uh, the street with interpreters. We had Spanish and Polish interpreter interpreters. So we had well over 2,000 surveys that have been taken over the last year, and this is hyper local survey data. 93% of respondents live in community board one that take the survey and about 38% are living on uh, some of the flagship open streets corridors like Berry Street, Driggs Ave, Massa or Sharon. Um, so this is really hyper local information that we're receiving. In terms of sort of just more of the granular data that we heard, 85% of folks are indicating that they are using open streets while walking. And really, one thing to keep in mind is that at many points in our trips, we are a pedestrian. You have to walk to the train, you have to walk to your car, you have to walk to a bus stop. You have to walk to the grocery store and so on and so forth. So the primary users of open streets are pedestrians. At one point or another, like I said, generally people a lot of times are pedestrians and are the predominant users on these corridors. Uh, these are also recurring regular fixtures that people are using on a daily or several times a week basis. So these are things that people are beginning to use and enjoy and, and really sort of just have as a great amenity right in their neighborhood on a daily basis. And only about 28% of folks were indicating that they were using these corridors for driving, uh, whether that be driving themselves, picking up or dropping off, uh, things like that. So about 28% of folks were using open streets for driving. In terms of how folks wanted to use these corridors in the future, generally uh, people wanted to continue to see a strong bike and pedestrian oriented uh, prioritization on these corridors. Uh, the vast majority of respondents, over three quarters, wanted to see the street open for strolling, such as walking leisurely and just enjoying outdoor space. Um, people also really wanted to continue to use this as a part of their daily commute. 
And of course, everyone is, is commuting all around North Brooklyn in a different way. So that could mean they're walking on their commute, they're biking, maybe they're driving, uh, so on and so forth. So people really see this as also as a safe venue to get to the places where they need to go when it is bike and pedestrian priority. Um, and then the other items that people wanted to see include other types of programming and activations. Uh, and uh, also driving about 20% of folks indicated that they predominantly only wanted to see the street uh, for driving. So now I want to just uh, uh, address some of the successes that we've seen, which I've kind of highlighted a little bit and then also talk about the challenges next really at the base open streets have become neighborhood hubs and a tool for recovery from the pandemic. These are the places that are people are able to safely gather and see folks that they haven't seen in many years. This has been a tremendous community building exercise, working with a diverse set of individuals that have come together to work collaboratively to make sure that these are really amenities and community hubs for people to use and enjoy. Uh, North Brooklyn is really lacking in open public space. Uh, so we're happy to sort of use our streets, our most valuable public space, for uh, the ability to add a little bit more space for people to gather safely, use it for programming, biking, walking safely, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, generally, also people comment that when a street is designated as an open street, the streets generally are quieter and they feel a lot safer for pedestrians and cyclists especially. Many businesses, because we did conduct a merchant survey as well, uh, indicated that the benefit of a street closure does allow them to have a little bit more foot traffic that's visiting their businesses, which is especially important, I would say, these days for restaurants and bars, uh, retail businesses, and other types of bit small businesses that have really struggled over the last year uh, as we've sort of endured through this pandemic. In terms of challenges, uh, because I, I want to acknowledge that not everything has been perfect and there are some hurdles that we need to overcome to continue this program uh, successfully and sustainably. Um, so I do want to just now touch on some of the challenges that have come up over the last year. Uh, first and foremost, uh, whereas we are so appreciative of all the efforts that our amazing community partners have invested in the success of open streets, we are totally cognizant of the fact that relying on volunteer labor is not a sustainable source of the success of this program. We are really committed to making sure that we have the proper types of resources to make sure that the city is taking more of a robust management role in the success of these open streets and the day to day operations. So we Kyle, realize that we need to. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Kyle, I hate to, I hate to stop you here because this is actually the highlight for me. But can can whoever's on step yeah. Eric, you I got wondered. muted somehow. Yeah, so the phone number, whoever's on the 718 number, if you don't mind muting, uh yeah, or Jerry, just mute everyone that's not Kyle at the moment. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh okay, please go go start over on challenges. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no point. worries. I was excited. Yeah, definitely. So, in terms of challenges, uh, because there definitely have been a few hurdles that have been thrown our way over the last year. Um, the first is that we recognize that we need to either better support our community partners or take more of a robust role in the day to day management of open streets. We're really appreciative of all the hard work and, and sort of sweat equity that our community partners have invested into the success of this open street. But at the same time, we realize that this is not a sustainable source of energy uh, to continue this program successfully. So we're really committed to trying to find resources and different types of program uh, opportunities and policy changes to make sure that these can continue uh, in the long term. We also realize that when a street is closed, they do become destinations. People really enjoy open streets. And I don't want to say that we're the victims of our own success. But we really do need to honor that people still live on these corridors. Kyle, you're muted. Yeah, we lost you, Kyle. I don't know. Your your mic is open, but we can't hear you. Oh, 
There we go. Okay, we got signs of life. Okay, go ahead. Okay. There we go. Back. We good? Sorry about that. The joys of video calls. Um, we just want to honor the fact that there are some quality of life challenges that must be overcome and making sure that everyone is, is playing the, the sort of role that they need to play in making sure that open streets are a success. So the quality of life challenges are definitely at the top of our radar. Light touch elements, uh, elements such as metal barriers that we've been using over the last year are definitely not something that's also sustainable in the long term. They can be ineffective and hard to manage for certain groups of individuals. So we really want to start to think about what types of design elements could be added to making sure streets can continue on in perpetuity. Um, regardless of the status of open streets, and, and like some have folks have said uh, over the last uh, hour, two hours that we've been together tonight, that there are still some significant traffic safety issues that persist. We just heard of a really amazing proposal on Meeker Avenue, and I think we're all really excited to, to see that come to life. Uh, but there also are a lot of other challenges that exist along uh, Berry Street, Drake's, Russell, and many of the other corridors that we have here in Brooklyn CB1. So we really want to make sure that we're making these streets as safe as possible for all types of uh, road users. And the final item is that we realize that access needs along any corridor in New York City are extremely complex and variable. The only thing in New York City that makes us the same is the fact that we are all different and we need to sort of really take that into consideration as we further develop what the plan is for these open streets. So we're really considering all types of road users as we're developing what these future plans might be. So the last item that I'm going to touch on now before we turn it over to comments and questions is some solutions and next steps. Recently, the mayor announced a really exciting $4 million investment in the success of open streets. Um, there's a variety of different ways that we're going to be supporting our community partners all across New York City to make sure that these continue to be vibrant elements of the streetscape. Um, for me, this is a really exciting time to be working in public space initiatives. I think this is sort of one of the biggest investments that's ever been made in this city and in the country really related to this types of public space. So we really are excited about all the things that are coming down the pike uh, to make sure that this continues uh, really to be, like I said, a vibrant element as a part of uh, the streetscape. We're going to be providing resources and support to our community partners um, to make sure that they can continue to execute open streets in a seamless way. Um, and like I said, that's going to be a very a variety of different types of support, funding, maybe personnel, programming elements, uh, you know, enforcement support, things like that. There's lots of layers to this that are really going to make sure that a lot of the issues that have persisted over the last year hopefully are gonna sort of be slowly uh, worked through and, and we're really gonna have positive outcomes. We're gonna to continue to work around other planning efforts in North Brooklyn. Uh, we have a close working relationship with my colleague Craig, who you just heard from uh, on the Meeker Avenue project and, and all, all the other sort of great planning efforts that are happening in the neighborhood. So we continue to work in close coordination with our colleagues across city government um, and state government, as well as other stakeholders. Uh, we're happy to continue to come back to the community board and brainstorm other ways to get community feedback about open streets that can inform a future project. Uh, like I said, we're continuing to commit to hearing from as many uh, diverse voices as we possibly can to make sure that we are making as much of an inclusive plan as we possibly can, uh, because we really do want to make sure that we hear from everyone as we develop what uh, these future designs might be. The plan now is to come back later in 2021, date to be determined, with some design proposals for some of the open streets corridors uh, in the city. Uh, we'll probably circle back before that related to some of the resources and support that we're going to be providing to partners in the short term to make sure uh, that these open streets are, are happening seamlessly. Uh, and then later in 2021 is where you'll hear more about these design proposals. So that's actually all of the presentation that I have tonight. I want to thank everyone again for their time and, and continuing to having me at, at this meeting and, and participating in this public process as we develop open streets. So Eric, I'm going to hand it back over to you now. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Um, uh, there's a lot in there that I know we've we've talked about offline that uh, looks looks promising. 
Um, looking forward to um, some of the structural things that are going to come down, uh, come down the pike. And now that uh, folks that don't know Open Streets was um, uh, voted permanent uh, Tuesday, I think, uh, um, by the city council. So this is something that um, the community is going to have to live with. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the reason I keep putting this on the agenda and that the committee thinks it's important to keep talking about is because we haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> We're picking up a mess that was dropped on us because of COVID. Um, and DOT is, has, you know, been the punching bag to, to get this working right. Um, not to say DOT isn't responsible for this. They are. And, but I think, you know, Kyle has been, uh, is an honest broker, at least uh, from coming coming to the meetings here, and um, we want to continue this conversation. Uh, we may do it a little differently going forward, but um, I think uh, I think this kind of structural uh, consideration for um, taking taking more of the responsibility onto DOT, I think that's a positive thing, both for the open streets volunteers and also for the um for a lot of the folks that are concerned about quality of life issues that are resulting or maybe not resulting from but adjacent to um the open streets uh issues so i'll, I'll just leave it at, at that and uh recognize uh, captain fahey of the 94 precinct um to update us on um uh, complaints 311 911 and any um, any efforts that the the 94 is planning uh, to address some of the quality of life concerns uh, particularly on Barry and um, uh, and you know West and McGorlick. Hi Captain. good evening everybody. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize the sacrifice of Detective Anastasio Sacos. Uh, we laid him to rest today. Um, he died in the line of duty when he was hit by a drunk driver last week. Um, please keep his wife, Irene, and his two small children in your thoughts. Um, and then I'll turn to my open streets. Um, we've seen an increase in 311s from uh, January 1st, 2020 to May 1st, 2020. Uh, comparing May 1st, uh, January 1st to May 1st, 2020 versus January 1st to May 1st, 2021. At every location, um, with the exception of the Nassau Avenue section. Um, there's been a 32% increase in 311 calls at Berry Street. There has been a 142% increase at North 3rd. There's been a 240% increase at Driggs, Maker to Monitor, and there's been a 121% increase, Russell Nassau to Driggs. So, um, you know, this is before the summer has really gotten underway. Uh, so, obviously, we've been working with our partners to really try to get ahead of some of the complaints. Um, the pr primarily, it's been noise complaints and illegal parking surrounding the open streets. Um, some of the things that we're looking to do as far as enforcement goes, um, I, I don't have a lot of resources to dedicate foot patrols, uh, but we are working with our NCOs. We're going to use auxiliary officers along Berry Street uh, just really to work with community complaints and make sure we're addressing everything that we can address. Um, you know, the NCOs, please feel free to reach out to them. Uh, we're, we have a big area in the precinct to cover, um, but we're going to move resources around the best we can to ensure that this is a safe program for everybody in the community. And I just want to stress that uh, that really is our goal to have a safe program. We've seen an uptick in reported incidents of harassment surrounding the program in the last two months. Um, we've seen the uh, barriers being removed from Driggs. We also took a criminal complaint for that. So I would just encourage everybody to act, um, you know, neighborly and have constructive conversations rather than um, resorting to insults and, and threats of violence. So, um, you know, obviously we take all of that seriously and, and uh, it will not be tolerated. So, you know, we we'll continue to work with all of our partners at the DOT um, and the community partners who really when um, NYPD did, didn't have the resources for this when the program was rolled out. So, um, you know, we all have to work together and, um, you know, we're happy to be a partner. Uh, we just want it to be constructive and safe for everybody. Thank you, Captain. And on behalf of the committee, um, our condolences to, um, to your department on, on the loss of uh, Officer Constantia and, um, 
Um, we'll, we'll circle back with questions and um, we'll hear from uh, FDNY. Um, Ms. Sanchez, are you still on the call? Hello, good evening, everyone. Hi. Yes, we're still here. Um, I just want okay, to segue. Great. Thank you. Um, also, thank you. Thanks for the invite, Eric. Um, certainly not my first uh, first time being here with you, but um, always happy to join you. Um, I wanted to introduce as well. We have the talent chief Paul Tag that is on the line with us because we spoke offline, Eric, um, and communicating in regards to I, uh, some of some issues that were revolved around the fire that took place at um, 101 North Henry Street on Sunday, April 18th. So I'm going to definitely invite um, Battalion Chief Paul Tay to really come and um, explain what happened, our response times and everything that happened with the incident as he um, works in operations and was actually there on that incident can give you um, the firsthand perspective as well. Thank you, uh, Chief. Thank you, uh, Chief. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Paul Tindon. Hi, hi, guys. I'm a chief of battalion 3-5 in Williamsburg. And uh, Sandra asked me to come on about the fire at 101 North Henry a couple of Sundays back. Um, it was a two-story building, and a gentleman was pulled off the top floor and survived. Um, I think Sandra just wanted me to address the response times of the companies in case anybody was worried about that. Uh, my understanding is the first two engine, first two truck arrived in three minutes and six seconds, which is underneath our average for the borough. Um, there were no issues as far as uh, the response times, uh, and I believe the gentleman, uh, at least as of yesterday, was had survived. He passed away. Thank the gentleman passed away, Eric. Just a clarification. Sorry. The gentleman in 101 passed away. Okay, that's that's unfortunate. Um, thank you, Kevin. Uh, Chief, thank you for that. Um, do you have a response on the second alarm? How, how long is their response time? When the second alarm company showed up? Yes. Uh, and I don't have that information in front of me. Like I said, it was 306 for the first two companies. It was 525 for ladder 106. And that was a full first alarm assignment. We responded on the second alarm. And at that point in time, the gentleman was already down the street on the corner of Driggs and North Henry. He'd been removed from the building. Okay, but uh, as far as both houses are concerned, they didn't um, they didn't report to you any uh, obstructions or anything um, hindering their arrival at the scene. No, they did not. Both guys said it was pretty clear sailing. Great. Okay. Thank you very much for that clarification. It's in, it's important for everyone to hear what really happened. Um, and, um, you know, obviously, thank you for, for getting there. I walked past it the other day and, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that we lost two people there. Um, Ms. Sanchez, uh, if you could um, <clears throat> report out any other uh, data you have on response times, either from uh, EMS buses or from uh, FDNY, any any kind of uh, response, not necessarily fire, but any fire, anything. Sure thing. I just wanted to share with you um, that um, one thing. Um, Kyle and I have attended several meetings, <laughs> several meetings together, to hear about Open Street. So, um, and and in addition to that. Um, we continue to work collaboratively. So beyond uh, attending community meetings, there are conversations constantly um, going on with DOT and FDNY and surely with other agencies as well um, as we continue to monitor open streets tonight. We're thankful because um, working alongside DOT, they, they, they're, there is always um, room um, to not only understand how we have to navigate, um, how we're forced to navigate uh, through the streets that on the confines of community board one and um, DOT is always um, welcoming of any feedback that we may have because the truth of the matter is that um, sometimes it may seem as if it will work and there may be some bad actors, um, but they are always um, willing to come back to the table and reevaluate things, um, things that may need um, that may need a second look. So I'll, so I'll, I'll definitely share that. As it relates to um, 
um, what will be um, uh, threatening medical emergencies. Um, our travel times have not um, been uh, our travel times have not been affected. Working um, alongside with um, data, I could I say even with our um, ambulance travel and e um, and also our um, the travel of um, our um, fire apparatus. Um, two medical emergencies. They have not. We took a. We, we, we did a. We took a look um, specifically in comparing um, July, August, and September of 2019. So this is pre-pandemic. Um, this is pre-open um, streets for the most part. And then looking at um, what would be considered the summer of 2020. And um, the average of all three months. There certainly um, was um, not an increase. As it relates to our response, as, as, as our, our response time, um, certainly um, I um, work here. Um, should there be should there be something that you notice again? Um, you are the community. You are are our our eyes on the street that you notice. Certainly, I'm going to put my email in the chat, but I'll also share it with you publicly. Sandra Sanchez at sdny.nyc.gov to continue to keep us um, in, in the loop of, the, uh, of how, um, of, of the experience um, that you have seen or what you have witnessed as well, because we find value in your feedback. Eric, can I That's... just, declare, can I add a clarifying remark, please? Please. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that it is on the record that everyone knows that the barriers on Driggs, which were stolen, um, were not in place when this fire took place. So there was nothing on Driggs Avenue related to open streets when this unfortunate event took place. But I want to make sure that it is on the record that everyone knows that the barriers were stolen and were not in place when this fire took place. Thank you, Kyle. I'm sorry for that oversight. <laughs> that is an important point. Um, but I just wanted to you know, drill down that there was no recorded delay, as some have said, because of open streets. That's an important point. We cannot be lying about important things like this uh, in the public realm that boosts up rumors and things like that. So thank you, Kyle, and thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Um, and thank you for making yourself available to, to folks for, um, uh, for reaching out. Um, When when uh, when you go through open streets with any, with um, either the trainings um, in the past, was there ever any a discussion about uh, barricades at all, or did anyone raise the question on any of your teams when open streets rolled out or anything like that? I'm just trying to see if there's anything um, that that you know was addressed or any concerns at all that you're aware of. Ms. Sanchez. Oh, she, okay. Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that your the question was, was complete. Uh, uh, there, um, in our initial conversations of open streets that we, we are aware of the growing list. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a list that we're constantly looking at. We're constantly reviewing as well. Um, so, um, and especially at the height of open streets and, Kyle can attest to this. We were having calls um, every day. Um, there were calls every day um, as we um, got a better handle on how to um, navigate and maintain the open streets. And we have already begun um, conversations on what open streets will be lo will look like um, throughout this summer season. Um, with that, we'll go to committee for uh, for questions. Um, uh, let's see. Will help me out. Uh, we'll look for. Can, can anybody wants to be recognized? Please raise your hand. And I'm already breaking my own rule. We've already gone over by five minutes. But um, anyway. Uh, okay. Eric, do you want me to call committee? Yeah, members? could you? Could you? I'm, I'm like rifling through this, and I'm not being successful. Okay. So, so uh, also first. Yeah, there might be some people that still had their hands raised before, but I'll start uh, first. I see is Simon Weiser. Simon. 
Uh -oh. No, Simon. Uh, Mary Adamer. We'll come back to him. Out. No, Mary. Okay. Karen Yeves. Hi, guys. Um, I just, I'll try and make it brief. Uh, um, my only concern is, again, I've asked this, you know, in previous presentations of, DO, of DOT um, in regards to traffic studies um, that will be done in the future for congestion in the area. Pre-COVID, we've had so many complaints regarding all of the taxis, what the event spaces, and now that things are opening back up and tourism is back, um, I'm really concerned about traffic and congestion and safety, you know, um, aspects as far as uh, the, you know, all of the taxis and the vehicles that are going to be in the area. Um, it's going to increase last year. Obviously, all the businesses were closed this year. It's going to be a little bit more different. And as everybody gets vaccinated, you'll see more and more increase in traffic with the taxis. Um, so I guess what are we going to what are we going to um, do as far as transportation studies, uh, traffic studies, and how are we going to mitigate with, you know, enforcement and making sure that the roads are not blocked? Um, and also, can we, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Sorry, Mary, Mary, can you mute? Can everybody mute except Karen, please? Thank you. Go ahead, Sorry, Karen. guys. I was getting my feedback and it was distracting. Um, so, yeah, so I'm again, I'm just really concerned about moving forward um, about the transportation impacts. And I just wanted to mention or ask the question regarding there was a pilot program on Manhattan Avenue um, for delivery. Uh, trucks, you know, to have them on the corners. Um, and I mentioned, you know, to DOT that that program should have been more in the north side in higher density areas um, where there's more, um, you know, traffic. So if, you know, if it's possible, if DOT could you know, mitigate some of, of the concerns with the deliveries, um, maybe look in the north side for for those options for that program instead of Manhattan Avenue where it's not even being utilized. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone from DOT? Related to the sort of development of, of open streets, um, I think you're spot on, Karen, you about um, making sure that we make sure that we're sort of factoring in any freight and loading needs along these corridors. Um, lots of people order packages, lots of businesses rely on the curb to receive deliveries, um, things like that. So we're definitely going to closely consider that as we develop um, the open streets proposals in the future. Um, general sort of the sort of general sort of uh, traffic study, um, I think definitely communicate those concerns to the Brooklyn Borough Commissioner's office um, and we can take a, a closer look. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello. So yes, uh, this What's is I'm sorry, this is Rhonda. I just wanted to also respond to Karen that if she had some specific locations that um so uh, assuming that you're talking about outside the realm of open streets, if you had some specific locations, perhaps that we could you could email me directly about um about that so i can follow up great thank you so we'll hear mary okay hang up mary uh, we'll hear uh we'll hear mary and then we'll hear simon okay so go ahead mary no you're
Mary, it looks like you're having a connection issue. Um, we'll go to Simon and then we'll come back to you. Okay. So Simon, are you there? Simon? <clears throat> Simon Weiser. Oh, the pain. Simon Weiser, are you there? Is it possible he just has his hand up from before when he spoke about no, um, the he other just, issues? He texted, no, he just texted me saying he wanted to he, he wanted to be recognized, um, which I'm trying to do. Okay, any other committee members with questions? We'll come back to both of them. Don't anybody else from the committee? Oh, William Vega. Sorry, William's gonna come after me here. Okay, wait. I think we got Mary. Let's let's take her question while while before she loses okay. her signal. Go ahead, Mary. I don't know what's going on with my phone. Yes. But anyway, can you hear me now? Go ahead. Okay. So I just want to comment on the captain's uh, statistics. I thought they were staggering, and as far as the FD and why. I think we would like to do better than average response times. And on that note, I would like to make a motion. Uh, Eric, is that okay if I make a motion? Can you hear me? Please make a motion. Oh. Okay. So my motion is as follows. On behalf of the Berry Street Alliance of North Brooklyn, I make a motion to remove the length of Barry Street from Metropolitan Avenue to North 12th the meeting. The residents have suffered under the DOT's designation of a street as an open street. They have been subjected to loud piped in or live music throughout nights as late as 2 a.m. Emergency vehicles have had to Mary, take that's, that's too long routes. of a motion. Mary, 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 that's too well, long I'm of sorry. a motion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. This is the breath. It has of to the be issue. no. It has, it has to be I concise. Be allowed to speak. I, I I'm, I'm, to be allowed I'm to giving speak. you the breath. Mary, I'm giving issue. you the chance. Mary, I'm giving you the chance to speak. But a motion has to be a specific request. It can't be, you know, uh, the motion, a commentary. Okay, I'll narrow it down. I respectfully ask the DOT to remove Barry Street from North 12th to Metropolitan Avenue from Open Street because of the reasons that I cited and tried to continue to cite just a minute ago. Thank you. And by the way, we have 1,100 signatures that we collected uh, that are in opposition to this particular stretch of the corridor on Barry Street. Thank you. Is there a second? Simon, you hear me? Yeah, Simon, hang on. We're we're in a motion. Is there a second on the yeah, motion? Yeah, I second it. I second it. Simon seconds. I would like to make an amendment to the motion. I'd like to make an amendment to the motion. Mary, do you accept the amendment? Yes, I do. Uh, go ahead, Simon. Okay, I I I. I I hear many, many opposition and and a lot of business, a lot of residents are complaining about this. Um, so I would like to uh, amend that the embedded should be removed f starting from Broadway. So she mentioned, uh, she, uh, many all mentioned uh, Mr. Palton. I would like to remove it from Broadway. The North 12th? Yeah. Is that right? Uh, okay, so we'll do roll call vote. Um, I'm just going to do it by by who I can see on the screen. So be be patient with me, please. Um, Simon. Yeah. Is that a yes on the motion? Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, Aaron, drink water. Oh. Um, Barry Adomerick? Yes. Ryan Conan? No. 
Thank you. Um, do, 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 do. Paul Kelterborn? No. William Vega? No. Um, Bronwyn Breitner? No. Gina Argento. Yes. Um, do, 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 do. Karen Nieves. No. Um, William Clagsbald. William Clagsbald. No vote. Um, Willis Elkins. No. Costa. Yes. Kevin Costa. <clears throat> Kevin Costa votes yes. No, no, sorry. Um, did, did anybody on the committee on the phone that I can't see your name uh, vote or wish to vote? One more time for uh, William Clagsbald. Eric, it's James Stewart. Yes, sir. Yes. Vote yes? Yes. Uh, Joel Goldstein. Yes. Me? Uh, okay. Anybody else not voted? Give William William Clagsbold one more try. Do you hear me? I'm Abe Leibovitz on the phone. Abe, go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Abe. Do you hear? Hello. If I can hear I'm you, I'm on please the phone. Go, Do you please. hear me? Yes, I hear you. Hello. I'm on the phone. Do you hear me? Yes. Abe Leibowitz, I said yes. Thank you. Hi, this is William Claxbolt. Yes. Yes, sir. And I vote no. One moment, please. The vote is seven in favor, nine against. The motion fails. Um, okay, thank you. Um, and I just want to say we have perfect attendance. So thank you, Can I all make committee a motion? members. Can I make a motion? If we're not going to have a discussion, we're just going to have emotions. May I make a motion? Um, can, okay. If, yes. I mean. I would like to make a motion that Barry Open Street becomes a permanent slow street with permanent infrastructure from Broadway to North 12. For a second. I second. William Vega seconds. Uh, we'll, we'll do roll call again. Um, discussion on the motion. Yes, discussion on the motion. Karen, you're recognized. I'm sorry, what do you mean by permanent infrastructure and I mean, can you restate, I mean, can you restate barriers, the motion, Ryan, please? Yes, I would like very open streets to become a permanent fixture 24 seven <laughs> with the type of unmovable barriers so we don't have to have volunteers coming out in the street, planters, things that are approved by FDNY that cars can get around, but slows down the speed. 
24 7 is actually obsessive. I'm and, and taking that it that is obsessive. Away, I know 24 7. Taking it I mean, let's let's be realistic now. But permanent permanent structures aren't, and taking it completely away was excessive. So again, instead of us having finishing out a community discussion, Mary put a motion in the middle to stop people talking, and it was unfair. So I'm just right. And I think we still need unfair. to have a, a community so discussion. And yeah, Ryan, so it was actually voted down. So let's be realistic so vote, and let's, so let's be fair. This, so let's vote this one down. If again the middle the motion was brought up as a as a point to total throw the, the meeting into chaos. Our side doesn't get to throw it in chaos too. I mean, I'm sorry, but that was wholly crazy planned. Okay, all right. That's, that's in the middle of the answer. discussion to throw in a motion. Thank I hear in Thank favor you, of calmness and letting everyone speak. I will rescind the Thank motion. You, Ryan. But I'm just saying Thank that please. was absolutely lame. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion on the item? Thank you. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, she just wanted to send the. Okay. So, um, Mary Domrick. Mary Domrick. Did she just not resend the vote? Um, yeah. the motion. She just she, rescinded. I didn't, right? If she did, I didn't hear it. Did you withdraw the motion, Ryan? In a show of good faith, Ryan, to have lots of lovely discussion, rescind. I will rescind the motion so we don't waste the time because we need to discuss what this all means. I would appreciate if the other side would do the same and not throw motions in in the middle of stuff. And while we have a quorum, can we vote on Meeker? Because we have a quorum. I, like, I agree with you, Ryan. Right, ho, ho, ho. Because we got a quorum because everyone's in here suddenly. Yes. Caring about thank stuff. You. Ryan, thank you. Thank you. Let me take a breath and exhale. All right, great. So uh, we're not done with this item. We can make a motion at the conclusion of this item. Um, we'll recognize the public uh, for one minute intervals. Please raise your hand. Um, and Am I back up, Eric, to help yes, with this? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, Thank you. So we're gonna. I'm gonna start from the bottom because I think that the way depends on how you signed up. So last time I started at the top. This time I'm gonna start at the bottom. First is Lauren Barth. Go for it. Hi. Sorry. Um, right, just kind of once again, thank you. I just can't believe that you're not polling and surveying the people in the community. The DOT was supposed to come to Driggs Avenue three days. They gave lackluster reasons on why they couldn't come. And once again, Greenpoint was not surveyed. So we're not saying that we're against open streets completely. We're saying we want people to come and talk to us. Ask us our opinion. If you want to close the streets Saturday, Sunday, during the spring and summer, you know, for any kind of pro a farmer's market, uh, you know, any kind of activity, I don't think the community have a problem. The problem is, is that nobody asked us. And when we, you know, when we see the streets, they're completely empty. The bikes are still in the bike lanes. The people are in the park, the nine acre park. And the cars that have to go through the streets are accosted by these volunteers. The people did not move the barricades 8 a.m., 8 p.m. It was always way before or well after, you know? And it just kind of begs the question, who's responsible for this program? Because I know my whole block, we're calling, calling, calling. 311 doesn't answer, DOT doesn't answer, and the Open Streets volunteers, including their leaders, have nasty things to say to the people that have lived here forever. So I want to know. What's going on with this? Who's responsible? How can you make this a program when you have no backup from the whole community because you didn't ask them? Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Next. Is anyone going to answer my question? No, right? You're just going to say thank you and move on because that's what you do. So that's it? Nobody has anything to say to me? 
Nobody wants to respond to my question. Lauren, if you would like to have a, a conversation, we're, we're happy to schedule a meeting. So Kyle, you. answer it now. This is a public forum for questions to be answered, man. Come on. I, I'm not entirely sure Who's what you're asking. The DOT okay, all right, that's on drinks. Yeah. Who makes okay, sure right. those things are moved at 8 p.m.? Who makes sure that the volunteers are respectful to the community okay. members? Who makes Thank sure the streets are you. used? Thank you. Thank you. Right. Next. Right. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Next. Um, Jack Donahue. Hi, Jack. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I just want to reiterate my support for the open streets. They've done studies. It has the vast support of the neighborhood. You just have to go inside and look at how many people are out there. Was um, it really? Who did you pull? Okay, one at a time. I will leave the ball. Lauren, you are Stop muted wrong. now. Can, uh, Marie or Jerry, can you mute Lauren, please? That's she's done. If you can't, if you can't be civil and follow the rules of procedure, then you are not going to be recognized or heard. Period. Jack, were you finished with your comment? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I know that there's always going to be opponents, you know, that get really riled up about programs that even even if they have like widespread report and widespread support. Um, I just want to put it on the record that we've had FDNY on, um, and we've had NYPD on, and we've had DOT on. We have the support of the agencies. Um, and I, and we have the vast support of the community. And to be honest, this meeting has been really just sad to see how people are just so angry about this for reasons that I don't still understand. Um, in, in spite of just kind of the widespread report, uh, support that we have in the neighborhood. Um, so yeah, I just want to put it on the record and this whole motion, this surprise motion out of nowhere, it's shameful. It's shameful. And, and I'm really ashamed to, to kind of see everybody involved in that. It's it's everybody supports this in the neighborhood. Uh, neighbors support this, and for this secret motion, for those who have time to sit through a full four hour meeting about this, it's embarrassing. Okay, Sante, you're next. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, One Go I've been witnessing a, a terrible thing. Just looking at the chat, uh, the tone of conversation, and. Uh, and I'm most embarrassed to be a, a board member, really. Um, I believe, you know, without talking specifically, I, I want to say my hands were raised uh, a while ago. Uh, I support what Karen uh, question about uh, traffic without being specific. Uh, definitely, I can assume that there are uh, areas like Berry Street and uh, in the future, uh, uh, if the park uh, will open and will be other activity by Kent, you know, uh, I have a question about traffic study. Hopefully, uh, that is something is going to come. Uh, I believe also something that it keeps coming and it's a recurrent uh, issue and it's not so much being against and maybe something that could help people to be more tuned uh, to open street is the fact that uh, we're talking about activating the street, what that means. Uh, many times especially if there is like certain business activity like bar or restaurant uh, and music uh, uh, definitely that's something has impact on the quality of life and i believe uh, uh, maybe that's something we should really deeply analyze and work on protocols uh, because i feel it's kind of superficial to say let's activate the street you know uh, that will keep generating uh, community rebellion and this division shouldn't happen. You know, open restaurants. Uh, uh, and I overheard uh, in other meeting uh, that we were talking about activating the street and, and open culture uh, was brought in a conversation. Uh, this actually was a meeting uh, It was open for a group that were interested in uh, uh, be responsible for certain open street. And there were idea, uh, maybe musician, if there were not organization, they didn't need a permit. And this was an issue that uh, we know it generated uh, already on Berry Street. There were musicians right with pickup track and amplify music. Uh, you know, doing something like that will will create, uh, you know, unregulated activity. You know, so if we want to uh, make open street work uh, i believe we have to work on very uh, strict and very well reasoned 
protocol that they can be respectful, not a general uh, community at large, uh, you know, because you can belong to the same zip code by living 20 blocks away. We should recognize specifically uh, the resident. My invitation to many angry uh, uh, community uh, residents that I, I saw in the chat, uh, they should work with their blocks, with their community, uh, uh, bring uh, specific uh, uh, census, so all the people lives there floor by floor, if they have that ability. So, you know, this data could be compared with the one of the uh, DOT, and, and maybe this is a way to move forward. Um, that's all. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Santa. Hello, my Excellent. name is Lee Burnett. I'd like to be recognized. Mr. Burnett, are you here to talk about the street co-naming? That's exactly right, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I, I hate to make you be patient, but can you, we'll just get through this item and then, and then we'll come to you next. The thing, I'm sorry, we tried to recognize you at the beginning of the meeting. Um, please hang in there and we're gonna hear you in about, uh, in a couple minutes, okay? That's, that's fine, thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you for your patience. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, bye-bye. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll we'll take five we'll take five more public comments and let me just recognize Karen Nieves quickly. Um, I just want to say I'm I'm really really disappointed in both sides of this coin, and I feel as a person who tries to be, you know, balanced and to listen to both sides i just want to say that from early on in the beginning the reason why you know certain people are very angry was because of the fact that they weren't being heard and some people had actually legitimate concerns and questions that were not addressed again early on and then the negative attacks on both sides um started and I think we're, I would hope that we're adults and I think that we could really work together and address the real issues, okay, of open streets. And if a street does not fit, okay, um, I think we should look at that. Those streets that do work should remain in effect. Um, I think we need to have more leadership and I know that, you know, the community partners have worked their tails off. I'm um, trying to make this program work and they've done the best that they can, but I really feel that we need more leadership from DOT. Okay. Um, or the mayor's office when it comes to addressing the community's concerns. Um, so please guys stop with the attacks. This is absolutely ridiculous. Um, we're not children here. Okay. We're adults. We're neighbors. We're friends and let's work together to make this work. Um, that's, you know, all I have to say. I'm really disappointed. I'm really, really disappointed of both sides. Good night. Uh, Eric, Karen, I just received I a threatening. I just received a threatening text for. And I'm very much inclined to report it to the police. So if I receive again a uh, text because I took a certain position, I will report it to NYPD. This is crazy. I want to close this item um, because we're not getting anywhere. And I and I and I want hold to hold 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 hold. Ho. <laughs> no, hold on a second. Can I jump in here? Not yet, Luke. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Luke. No, respectfully, not yet. What? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, okay. So, so I've, I've spoken to, I'm just going to take this opportunity now because I've spoken to some of the, some of the committee members and, um, um, I've talked to, to the board office. <clears throat> my, my intention with, uh, having this on the agenda every, every month was exactly what Karen said. There were people that were not being heard and they deserve to be heard. And I've made efforts, I've reached out to everyone that's emailed the board office, either by a phone call or by an email or some way 
to try to address their concerns and then have them heard at the board. I would say that 99, maybe 100% have had a chance to speak over the, over the last however many hours we've discussed this over the last six months. It's very frustrating to have so much discord on this issue where we're just talking over each other. Um, yes, the Berry Street folks have uh concerns but i'm not entirely sure that they're open streets concerns they may be um open street adjacent but you know if stuff is happening late at night that's not an open streets problem open streets end at eight um for for others um you know these conflicts over over the barricades and things like that i stood at north eighth and Barry two weekends ago and I watched this super from one of the local buildings wait there and talk to his neighbor waiting for a fight. Okay. That's what I saw. That's what I witnessed. Now, to be fair, the volunteer was late re removing the barrier. So he, he removed them. So I'll thank him for volunteering, but you know, d d this is insane. And now we're getting like, you know, violent comments in the, in the, um, uh, in the chat, I will entertain five more one minute comments, but I'm going to, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a motion to form a subcommittee to have a hearing, not a meeting, a hearing with, uh, and I, I've spoken to Karen and I've spoken to Aaron. I think uh, they're the most, well, Karen for her experience is former chair and for exactly just what she just said is like her even keel. And Aaron, I don't know how Aaron, Aaron feels about open streets, but I've seen the work that she does, and I believe um, that she's a good fit for a three-member committee, uh, subcommittee, strictly to address open streets. Um, I can't promise we will have a meeting this month, but what we will do is we will convene both sides independently, one with the one with the the the, uh, the volunteers, and one with the the newly formed organization that. Um, the, um, the Berry Street neighbors, and and we'll reach out to the West and the McGorlick West Street and the McGorlick folks too. And what we will do is ask specific questions for specific answers for a limited amount of time. Take those recommendations and re put them, bring them back to the committee, and report it back to um, in a in a in a recommendation to the DOT, NYPD, all the affected agencies uh, for a full board vote. We will continue to discuss open streets and old business, but if we're just gonna sit here and yell at each other and say, we've been saying the same things for six months and no one is budging. And the purpose, usually talk, talk is better than war, war, but now we're just in war, war. So it's not helpful. Um, so I make a more motion to form a subcommittee to address open streets concerns and report back to the committee full committee and the, and the full board with uh, and nominating and, and nominating Karen Nieves and Aaron Drinkwater to, um, to also be part of the subcommittee. I Karen Nieves second. Okay. Roll call vote. I don't stand the motion. Sorry. I mean, I, I, with all respect, it's a very good idea, but does this have to come from the, the chair, from the board? I mean, it's a good idea. It's a very good idea for to hear uh, the side. I, I checked the bylaws, Simon. Um, I, I checked on the bylaws. There's no clear language. Um, so I checked with, uh, with the office. Um, the chair has the, um, the board chair has the, the power to form committees, but uh, it's, um, um, it's appropriate for a committee to form its own uh, subcommittee um, when appropriate. So that's that's the direction I'm going by. I'm not doing this willy nilly. I checked on it first, um, and uh, so that's that's it. Is there any other discussion on the motion? I have uh, some discussion on it, Eric. Go ahead, Mary. Okay. Um, while I think that is probably an idea that could work. Uh, I feel that you, and we had this discussion earlier, I feel that you should have representatives from the community from each open street in question or in debate on that committee in addition to 
community board members, because if they're not represented, what is the point? You've got two chairs that voted no on a motion. So that doesn't sound, I mean, if they voted neutral, that would be one thing, but it, it's it's already skewed. So to make it more fair, I think you should put people from the community on that committee. Okay, uh, there, well, uh, all I'll say is that I, I'm picking folks that do not have a particular view or have not expressed a particular a vote on a motion is not a view. I'm sorry, it's just not. So um, I want neutral people on the subcommittee that can ask neutral, specific questions that are substantive and not emotional. Period. Any other discussion on the motion? But I, I respect I respect your your I respect your point, Mary. I don't want to minimize that. I do respect that it. it's valid, but that's that's my logic. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay, roll call vote. Uh, Mary Domerick. Willing to give it a try. Yes. Thank you. Um, sorry, I lost my. Wait, hold on. Let me just get my list back up. Bear with me. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, Simon. Yes. Simon Wiseman. Yes. 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 Thank you. Aaron Drinkwater. Do I have to excuse myself since I'm included in the motion? Sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, good. Thank um, you. Although, well, the Karen made the motion, so I mean, whatever. Um, I think sorry. it's a good idea and a, a worthwhile endeavor. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Ryan Conan. Yes. Uh, Paul Kelterborn. I vote yes. Vega. Yes. Um, Bronwyn uh, Breitner. Yes. Gento. Argento. She's still here. Okay, Karen Nieves. I guess I should recuse. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, uh, William Clagsbald. Yes, I would go for it. You, Willis. Yes. Ben Costa. Yes. James Stewart. James Stewart. Yes. Uh, Joel Goldstein. Yes. Uh, is Abe Lepkowitz still here? Lebowitz, sorry. Abe, no vote. Um, I vote yes. Did I miss anyone? Did I miss anyone? Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Two, three, four, five, six, thirteen. Okay, that's fourteen yes and three refusals, including myself. Um, thank you. All right, so I will be in touch um, with the entire committee on when um uh when this uh, subcommittee meeting will happen i will also be in touch with um some point person um at uh, north brooklyn open streets uh coalition and mary i'll work with you to pick um, an appropriate panel for the um, um for the quality of life folks okay so I am going to uh, Luke. I'm sorry. I am going to, I am going to close this item. I, I understand the frustration with everyone. I, I know I get it. I get it. Um, but we'll, we'll take it up at the subcommittee. We'll report back. And again, like if it's going to be, anybody can bring up anything in open business. So it's not going away. It's just, it, it just can't like we took an hour on this an hour. 
it's, it's insanity. Like it, every week, every month, it's like an hour, an hour and a half. It's, it's, we, we have to like, look, the, the board is here to, um, we're advisory, right? The famous words, we are advisory. Let's meet bloodlessly, soberly, make recommendations to the agencies and, and move on. So I am gonna close this item. I do apologize. As always, all comments in the chat are part of the record. So in the nasty comments that happened tonight that are unuseful, um, those are all part of the record and, um, and we'll take it up again next month. Um, I will not, I, it will be on the agenda for June, um, but that's, that's it for tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, uh, I would like to recognize um, uh, Mr. Burnett. Are you still on the phone, I hope? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, uh, and uh, I wanna thank uh, Captain Fahey, uh, um, uh, Ms. Sanchez, uh, the, the chief, uh, and Kyle and Rhonda from DOT for um, sitting through another punishing hour. Um, uh, but thank you very much for for your information. And and if you could please, uh, Kyle, if you could forward me that uh, that presentation, uh, and uh, Ms. Sanchez and and uh, Captain Fahey, if you could um, send me an updated uh, email um, on the on what you reported, that would be that would be helpful for the report. Okay, I appreciate everybody. Thank you, Eric. Can we do um, a speaker vote before we go on to the street? Yes. Thank yes, you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, oh, I wasn't sure if someone else, I mean, I can think go of ahead, a motion. Go ahead. Let, let's, um, let's go. It's 930. <laughs> we're in support of the meager thing with questions about the paid parking. I don't, I don't know. Um, okay. Does, does, any, does anyone have a, okay, if someone else, you. thank you. Does any, would anyone like to make a motion on the meager project? Sure. Uh, I can, Karen. Please state the motion. I make a motion to support, make Meeker move recommendations okay. Okay. to the Department of Transportation. And Ryan, okay. what was about the, <laughs> Ryan, what were you saying about the, and the meter I, parking? The, we, uh, I mean, we, I think that the community has questions about the paid parking, about like what the expected, like we have questions about the paid parking with like the expected revenue, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. Requ and request that DOT provides information on budget of where revenue of meter parking um, will go. Okay. Uh, provide info on, are, now you I, said make maker move. Do you mean the DOT plan? No, the Karen, make them make me a move plan. Okay, just, um, I'm sorry. Uh, just, uh, recommendations. Okay, wait, 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 before, before, <laughs> wait, okay, before, before we have a second, I just want to be clear. So if we're going to um, renew our support for the make me or move plan, that should be a separate motion from any support that we want to have on the DOT presentation tonight. So I, I just, before somebody I makes a second, I just. I just want to clarify that. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I just want to be it, clear. We we did say that we were going to still support because we did not have a quorum at the last yes. board meeting. That's that right. we still wanted to um, move forward with the re uh, recommendations from the community of make Mika move. Um, so whatever out of that, you know, out of those meetings, monthly meetings that we um could have dot take a look at for uh future planning for under um meeker avenue so okay, that's so separate from us supporting the plan that they presented tonight so we have to make two motions is what okay, you're saying so yes so if you could restate the the make meeker move motion please sure Karen, thank you I make a motion to support make maker the community's recommendations to DOT for make maker move under the BQE. Great. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Ryan. 
Uh, we'll do acclamation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sustain? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, and then... Can I make a motion, Wallace. Eric? Go ahead, Wallace. Go ahead. To um, approve the DOT plan with the caveat that they come back and give more information about um, the necessity of the paid parking. Got it. Is there a second? I second. Ryan seconds. Um, acclamation. Um, those aye. 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 Those no. Abstain. Motion passes unanimously. Great. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, sorry we didn't do that. Two hours. Hey, Eric, can I just ask a question about that? That was very confusing, was but I got it all written down. Um, uh, the, the regarding the second motion to support yes. our project with a request for a justification for the paid parking, that still has to go to the the board and then be voted on yes. by them. So yes. it's not like you're expecting this to come to the full board. No. Uh, no. Okay. And on that but topic, you, but you can expect that it will be asked at the full board meeting next week. But but no, it, it's it's not official until the report is voted out. Okay. 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 Great. Um. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Burnett. You are very very patient. Um. So uh this. This came uh, just a, a little heads up. So this item, this is back. We're back to item number one, um, the Shoal Street co-naming. Um, this had come to us through um, uh, through uh, Detective Barbara Taylor Burnett, who had reached out to both uh, Antonio Reynoso's office uh, and directly to the board office um, about a street co-naming. Um, I'm going to let um, uh, Mr. Burnett. Uh, uh, go ahead and speak um, on on the item and just uh, why um, why it came to us and and how we want to go ahead and 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 um, honor the detective. So, Mr. Burnett, you're you're recognized. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, my, my wife Barbara, uh, she was a detective assigned to the intelligence division on 9-11 uh, and uh, right around the time the second tower collapsed she was present like at ground zero and she wound up staying there for the next maybe two months like hundreds and hundreds of hours um in 2006 she was retired on disability and she was uh diagnosed with interst interstitial lung disease um in 2009 she uh, was asked to uh, travel to Washington, D.C. and t testify under oath in front of uh, Congress to get uh, health benefits for uh, first responders and any other civilians or anyone that incurred health problems as a result of uh, the terrorist attack. And, you know, partially due to her uh, testimony in front of Congress, uh, President Obama signed that into law. Uh, she went back to Congress in 2015 for the first uh, renewal of that that law. She also testified again on the law. Um, 2017, she was uh, diagnosed with interstitial with uh, lung cancer, and it's inoperable because of the state of her lungs from the interstitial lung disease. Um, she was born and raised in the Williamsburg houses. Her family actually. Uh, her parents actually moved there in the late 50s, and one of our daughters and, and granddaughter still lives there. Um, we're still like lifelong members of St. John's Lutheran Church on Borger Street, and since the 20th anniversary of 9-11 is coming up, uh, my family and myself would really 
like to honor my wife, you know, with a uh, street coning ceremony. The one issue I believe is that my wife is actually still alive. Um, she, she's undergoing chemo treatments for the last four years. And, you know, it would be wonderful if she could still be present, like to be honored in this way. I know there's pre precedent for, not maybe not street names, but there's definitely precedent for honoring uh, people while they're still alive. I mean, right off the top of my head, Mayor Koch got the 59th Street Bridge named after him. Uh, there was a firefighter that my wife actually went to uh, Congress with, and he was given the key to the city while he was still alive by Mayor de Blasio. So, like I said, there is there is precedent. So, you know, that that's basically it. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I'd like to make a motion. Eric, you're muted. Uh, thank you, Mr. Burnett. Thank you, Roy, for her service, um, uh, both to the community and to the city at, at large. Um, um, I, I think we can just go ahead with a motion um, uh, to uh, Simon. I think I think you were going to make it. I'll just let you go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to, to change the name as requested. Okay, so be, I'd just in. like to make a comment. It would be an honor that the community board uh, would honor this detective for uh, his service and uh, and to all the people who uh, perished in the 9 11. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll second the motion. Um, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good. Uh, abstain. All right. Motion passes. Mr. Mr. Burnett, thank you again. Um, and, and thanks to, uh, detective Barbara. Um, uh, please, I, I hope she's sitting next to you hearing that we, we voted to support this. Uh, oh, yes, and we'll, yes, we'll be taking this as a matter of fact. We'll, we'll be taking this up Tuesday at uh, the full board. It promises to be another long meeting, but if you want to, if you want to jump on real, the full board, we'll, we'll be voting on this uh, next Tuesday. So um, stay tuned and I'm sure the office or um, Councilman Reynoso's office will be in touch with you. And thanks again for all your patience and everything. No, oh, thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate it. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. All right. Good okay. night. Good night. Good night. And thank you. Okay. Everybody focused on what's important. Good. So now we're going to go to, um, item number four. Um, so, uh, folks will remember, um, uh, two months ago, I think it maybe even almost three. Now, um, uh, there was a child, Shimon, uh, Freed was, um, was killed uh, when he was hit by um, uh, when he was hit by a school bus. Um, there was a lot of uh, reporting on this at, at the time, um, and uh, members of the committee, uh, mostly Ryan and some others, had, had raised concerns about um, what Simon, the status. Simon, can you mute yourself? You're there's mad. I'm having trouble hearing you, Eric, because Simon is yeah. still on. It's it's my mic, but yeah, Simon, can you can you mute for a second? I think there's somebody else with an open mic too. Simon, can you mute? Yeah, I did it. Sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you. You're, you need to mute, Simon. Otherwise, there's too much feedback. Okay, well, we'll see. Uh, anyway, so um, there was. Uh, you know, uh, reporting at the time, and then at, at the last um, <clears throat> old business, uh, Ryan mentioned that um, she would uh, like an update from uh, from the precinct on the status of the investigation. Um, I did some some checking on my own um, in between meetings <clears throat> and found <clears throat> that there um, there really haven't been any updates either to the press or to the community, um, and so I. Um, 
I want to make two, uh, I want to entertain two motions. Uh, one, you know, because there, there's precedence for this. Um, we've asked for um, information on um, the accidents on Graham uh, and Metro. We've a asked for, uh, for the other accident on Metro and Union. Um, we asked for um, clarification from the department on the uh, uh, Sarah Pitts fatality. We, we've been asking for letters of uh, information from the precincts, responding precincts, um, I think as long as I've been on the committee um, and probably longer. And folks from about two years ago may remember a meeting that we had at uh, 211 Ainsley Transportation Committee meeting when we we're talking about North Henry Street. And uh, Teresa Toro came and she, she, uh, she reminded the committee about a, a child, and I'm sorry I'm forgetting that child's name right now, that um, that had been killed in a traffic fatality um, because, in her opinion, there were measures that the board could have taken to uh, mm -hmm. to have prevented that. And that, and I, I'm sorry I don't remember the child's name, but that always, even though I wasn't on the board then, that always stuck with me as as kind of a guiding principle that if we can do something, we should do something. And, and, and if all we can do is ask the 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 nine zero to get back to us on the details of of that investigation. Um, that's gonna that's gonna help us when we're talking about all these traffic safety issues to go to go forward and and advise the agencies that are involved in traffic safety um, to to do better. Um, you know they're they're I, I don't want to I don't want to say they're not doing their best but you know if, if we can be our job is to be helpful to them and to help them do their jobs correctly and so anytime that we reach out to the to the precincts we're keeping them on notice that we're watching and we're paying attention when these fatalities happen in our community um and so uh and i also want to mention um that uh folks will not remember because i don't remember uh, but i was reminded uh that um Last July, uh, um, District Attorney Gonzalez uh, had formed a, um, uh, I'll call it a task force to investigate all um, serious accidents and fatalities um, in Brooklyn, and um, and part of that, uh, part of the mission of that uh, department was to go to accident scenes and to do their own investigation and then do outreach to the victims uh, and their families, uh, like they would do with. Um, uh, like sex abuse cases or anything like that. It would be to follow the same model. So um, I, I, I want to entertain a motion for a letter to the precinct and, and to uh, District Attorney Go Gonzalez on the status of the Sh uh, Shimon Freed um, investigation. But then I also want to use this as a precedent so that any fatality that occurs that's traffic related in our community is going to automatically generate a letter to the to the uh, responding um, uh, the responding precinct for clarity and also to the attorney general uh, sorry the attorney general the district attorney um, as long as um, this program is running so um, I'll entertain a motion for a letter to um, I, I'd like to make I'd like to discuss the motion go ahead Simon well okay, somebody so has to make the motion before we can discuss <laughs> but go ahead we'll do discussion now go ahead Simon okay so so. It's really um, encouraging that we, you know, we we go, we go, and we try to find out and see how we could do better, as you as you uh, mentioned. Uh, but I, I, and I spoke to you, you know, not before the meeting, and I did mention to you, is that I think that if this is the case, first of all, as we if we know if we know what happened here, it was a simple accident. This is not a intersection uh, had to do with a bus picking up a school child, but. If 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 that's the case, that we should, every single accident, uh, fatality uh, in community ward one, if it's a pedestrian, or a bicycle or an automobile, we should have you know that should be standard every single and going backwards. I know for sure we did request on uh, certain accidents. We still didn't get uh, response from. Uh, I know there was a request from other accidents that happened. Now we still didn't get response. Either the police has a protocol they do don't release the information, and we're just wasting our time. But you know we should make sure that, uh, that we do get response. We we do want to make better 
and enhancements for the safety of the pedestrians, you know, and the general public. So, you know, so if, if we're going forward to writing this letter, it has to be uh, across the board all the time, not, you know, a pick and choose. Exactly, Simon, and and that's that's why. I mean, going going forward, I you know, I only have so many hours in the day to to go through like old reports and stuff, and like you know, look at you know where we haven't <laughs> haven't gotten responses or whatever, you know. But if 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 we can, we will do that. But I just want to I just want to say that going forward, what you said is echoing. I think what I'm saying is that any fatality, any fatality, pedestrian, cyclist, motorist must generate a, a letter from the transportation committee submitted to the full board for um, status of the investigation, um, if it will help. Is there any more discussion? Eric, it's just Captain Fahey. Can I make a suggestion that you include um, Chief Royster from the Chief of Transportation's office? Because I'm sure she would be very willing to partner with you on this. Thank you, Captain. Can you spell her first name, her whole name for me? Yeah, it's Kim K I M, uh-huh. and it's R O Y S T E R. And she's chief of of transportation. Chief, okay. So I'm sure she'd be very interested in partnering with communities across the city to have transparency in these investigations. Which, you know, by the way, in, in cases of fatality, they're not conducted at the precinct level; they're conducted by highway, you know, collision investigation squad. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Captain, for that clarification. Um, <clears throat> for the, um, so, uh, so <laughs> should we send it to the precinct or not? Um, I, I think as just a matter of course, since the precinct did respond, it's respectful to include them in the request. Um, but I would also include um, uh, Chief Royster uh, in that as well, and also the Brooklyn DA. Um, but I need a formal motion, um, please, someone. Anyone? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> um, can you write it for me? No, I make the motion that for, that. Um, sorry. Yes, thank you. That we draft a letter that, oh my God, see, I'm really not, I don't like to make motions. Okay, I'll um, make the motion. Thank you. I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, so weird to be chair and make a motion. Okay, so I'm making a motion to draft a letter uh, on the status of the Shimon Freed um, fatality uh, to the 90 precinct, the district attorney, Eric Gonzalez, and to Chief uh, Kim Royster of Transportation. Chief of Transportation. Is there a second? I want to amend that. I want to amend the motion. Uh, okay. Well, it's two. It's going to be two different motions, Simon. But go ahead. State your your amendment. Uh, uh, and we, they should respond to all. Uh, and that's a separate, a separate, separate motion. Separate motion. One at one at a time. So, is there a second for for the first motion? A second. And who is that? This is Bronwyn. Bron- Thank you, Bronwyn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carries unanimous. Okay, and now, uh, uh, unanimous. Okay, so um, the next item is, um, I'll make this motion too, since it's my idea, Um, that, um, and Simon, you can chime in on this if you like. Um, uh, The Transportation Committee, uh, a motion that the Transportation Committee will um, Transportation Committee will send um, requests for information on all traffic fatalities within Brooklyn Community Board 1, Community District 1, to the uh, responding precinct, district attorney, and chief of traffic, or chief of transportation at the NYPD. Is there a second? Simon, you happy with that? No, uh, we we would like to have answers. 
<laughs> on all the previous requests uh, that were given in, including uh, the ones that happened on Graham Avenue, a White Avenue. I know that uh, I, Ryan just put in, uh, as mentioned, uh, you know, you know these uh, these accidents, and I don't see the police have responded to all these uh, accidents that happened the last uh, year. I would say on Grand and on White Avenue. It's you know well, you know if we go if we go we go all the way you know they have to respond to the old ones as well. All right. Well, that that can be a separate that could be a separate motion. But uh, does anyone want to second the motion on the floor? I will second it. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, opposed. Stain. Motion carries. Okay, Simon, state your motion. Uh, that um, the local precincts that uh, the last year have had fatalities, and that community transportation committee has requested information on them, that they uh, respond to uh, they respond to our request to know the the. the Specifics how the accidents occurred in, for the benefit to learn on on um, uh, you know say um, upgrading or you know uh, uh, transportation issues. Okay, I'll, I'll second that, um, and I'm just going to restate it uh, so it's clear. So, um, uh, community board one motion uh, that community board one transportation committee requests. Um, Update on um, request uh, request an update on pre just the previous year, Simon. Just uh, well, those were the ones that uh, you know. I remember that we were very okay, passionate so, so about. So any okay, okay, all right. So let's say this uh, on any open investigations regarding traffic fatalities from 2019 to the present. How's that? Right. That's great. Great. Okay. We have a winner. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Lots of stuff to vote on on Tuesday. Um, okay. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, I, I think this, this is a good thing to just you know, keep agencies that are, you know, looking at a lot of different things to keep them um, aware that the community is not letting these things go. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we expect action uh, or at least information that can help us um, make better requests to, uh, to DOT, to the departments, fire department, uh, NYPD, et cetera. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, Old business. New business. Eric, That's I'm sorry right. to interrupt, but like the whole chat is going crazy talking about me. And if you shut down the meeting without having a discussion about this, they're going to say that you didn't want to talk about it. So That's I fine. don't know. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to talk about it and we're not okay. going to talk about it. Okay. All right. If, if if anyone has has an issue with any board member, um, it is not uh, the jurisdiction of any committee to address that matter. That that matter should be addressed to the executive committee or to the borough president, and that is all I'm going to say about that. The executive committee or the borough president. Thank you very much. Any new business? Motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Everyone. And, I'm, and, and just one thing. I'm sorry this was three and a half hours. I really am going to try <laughs> to, but you see how it went. You see. So, okay. So, uh, Jerry or Marie, whoever's running the show, do not close the chat because I need to. Ryan, can you do the thing? Or, yeah, or... yeah I'll, I'll do it again. Ryan, too. And, Ryan and Willis both, please just cut and paste the, the chat and email it to me, please. Yes. Because I'm on my iPad and it doesn't work. It's stupid. Okay. Um, it's a long you know, chat. It's taking a lot of time to cut, cut and paste it. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. 
All right, just hold it open. Every everybody, you, you're you're free. <laughs> did we did we adjourn? Yeah. Oh, yes, we did. Adjourned. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Thank you all. So right. thanks everyone. Thank you. Uh, this is actually a really <laughs> long chat. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Please, everybody, be safe and. My email. It's good to see you, Luke. Karen. <laughs> Bye, Karen. Bye. Everyone.